it's KU week. I know that this is kind of the uh, potential cherry on top for them uh, with this game uh, because they're already bowl eligible, so they really don't have anything to lose. And uh, I know this, that they're playing hard for each other and they're playing hard for, for their coaching staff, and uh, um, it's going to be a big challenge. flower of the state of Kansas since 1903. This rivalry, as we mentioned, being renewed for the 120th time, Spencer Tillman. We know what's at stake for Kansas, an opportunity to go to a bowl, a winning season. But for Kansas State, they're hunting for a title. Yeah, and they're going to have to do with a couple of beleaguered quarterbacks. Jalen Daniels and Jason Bean are the starters. We know that they'll have a shot, right? But how much they play is really what Andy Koltanecki, the offensive coordinator for the Jaguars, got to figure out. And if he can do that, remember, this isn't Texas where you've got a quarterback that's been out for a month, coming back, it's a blowout. You can let him knock the rust off. But Jason Bean is the guy that makes them who they are, I believe, right now. But again, Jalen Daniels probably going to get the start. Now, on the other side, Will Howard, to me, has been off the chart. Yes. Playing at a high level right now I think he's got 11 touchdowns over the last four games that ties the organization high right now for the program he's outstanding he's mature and he's gonna be a difference maker today we're gonna to see if he can hang up as many as he did in West Virginia this game has never been bigger since 2007 and as we get you ready for our progressive pregame countdown brought to you by progressive let's take a look at what it means to these fans yeah. It's the Sunflower Showdown. Coming up next on Fox Four. Yeah. Here's the season and series history. The ninth longest series. Jayhawks lead despite losing 13 consecutive times. It's been the Governor's Cup since 69. The house is jumping. <laughs> this is the first time since 95 that both teams have six plus victories. It's also the first time this game has been televised nationally on an over-the-air network in prime time. 43 degrees. We do have rain. It's been raining since about an hour before the kick. And Kim, that rain is going to be an equalizer, probably going to help Kansas out better, in my opinion, because of the way they plan to attack this Wildcat offense. Tabor Allen will kick it away. Kansas State receives because Kansas deferred, which is already a surprise. Mm -hmm. And here comes Malik Knowles. Out near the 30-yard line before he is taken down. Enter Will Howard, who's been as hot as any quarterback in the country the last four weeks. It's his third start of the year. He announced, really, his stardom when he came in for an injured Adrian Martinez against TCU. He lit up the Horn Frogs defense for much of the second quarter out to an 18-point lead before TCU had that remarkable comeback. Tim, you're absolutely right. He has been like a lit fuse, racing to a point to explode. Let's see if he can continue some of that offensive fireworks against this team like he did against West Virginia. Martinez not dressed out, will not play. Still hobbled from that ongoing injury. As you take a look 
at this Kansas State offense. They've had some issues in their offensive front. We may see some guards moving to center because of circumstances with Gillum. Deuce Vaughn is at the top of the scouting report, number 22. Brooks Warner and Senate, who's really become a target of late at tight end. And here goes Deuce, right on cue. Stopped by Sam Burt, the defensive tackle in that 4-3 front for Brian Borland, the defensive coordinator. Phelps is a good pass rusher. Malcolm Lee is a load at the other end. Young, Rich Miller's the leader of the defense with Barry Hill at the other linebacker. And that secondary will be tested. Logan is the leader without question. Kenny Logan. Third down and three. Nice tandem. Four wide receivers across the routes. Should be open in the back. Should be open. And the check down to Vaughn. A great tackle in space by O.J. Burroughs. And it's going to be fourth and one. Well, that's a nightmare coming at you. 22, man, on the swing pattern. This is exactly what he wants. If those underneath mesh routes are not working, you're going to check it down to this guy. He's not a bad option. 22. Right around 13, 1,400 yards rushing. He's one of the leaders in terms of the conference play. And the only reason he's not starring, Tim, is because new talent has started to merge in this Wildcat defense. Burroughs, who made that outstanding mano a mano tackle, is back deep. Here's the punt from Ty Zentner, who's done both. Oh, yeah, he's done place he's kicking. Man. All the ball oh, is out. It's out. It's out. And Kansas State is on top of it. The wind would be an issue, no question about that. Tevin, it's not just the wind, it's also the rain because he slipped. Yep. As he seated that ball and his momentum is taking him backwards, watch that foot slip right out from underneath him, and he loses the handle on the ball. It's at the boy. Absolutely. On top of it. Yep. Well, special teams is a hallmark of what this ball can coverage you all about historically no matter who's been in charge they've always played elite special team boy that's your worst nightmare you just made a tremendous play on defense and then turns it over but you're right he slipped while backing up and the elements already being hurt from on the setback the 55 yards by Zaytner really helped stretch play no touchdown The second touchdown run of the year for Malik Knowles coming over from that receiver spot. And Burroughs had a shot but couldn't wrap him up. I love how they're integrating him in these kind of short, tight jet sweeps to him. He's already touched the ball on returns. This guy's a major dual threat in the kicking game as well as from scrimmage. He's an outstanding player. Zinner, who took over both the place kicking as well as the punting after the TCU game when they missed some field goals that could have made a difference in the outcome. Boots through the extra point. The muffed punt recovery by Boydo leads to the Moles touchdown and K-State leads by seven. Fox College Football is sponsored by Cadillac. Be iconic. And by Wendy's $5 Biggie Bag. It's everything you ever wanted. So the element's already a factor. Muffed putt recovered, leading to the touchdown for Knowles. I'm a little surprised, Spencer, that Lance Leipold deferred, given what was discussed with us in a meeting about getting off to a fast start. Yeah, it was a surprise. You want to get the ball in your hands to take advantage of as much as you possibly can, and again, and take the ball out of the hands of the team that hung up nearly half a hundred against West Virginia last week. Touchback, and KU will begin at the 25-yard line. Jalen Daniels. They can run so much more of the offense than Andy Kotelnicki was with him in the game. Started last week, was rusty. They kept him in a little longer than perhaps many thought they should. But he told the coaches, I need to work out this rust. They can run Spencer, as you like to say, that triple option to go along with RPOs in a manner that Bean cannot. Yeah, and they will build the triple option with some of their wide receiver personnel because they're nicked up. Kai Thomas, number eight, the running back is out. So you'll see some of those wide receivers in the option game. Here we go. Corey Lachlan on the option. He's pressed into duty because of 
Thomas being out. Savion Marshall's been sick. We expect him to play. Devin Neal, their lead back, the Lawrence native, is nicked up as well. Well, the issue is going to be injuries, Timmy. How long can number six go? Jalen Daniels. It wasn't a big issue against Texas because it turned out to be a blowout. You want him to knock the rust off after being out for an entire month. This is different. Devin Neal normally starts at the position, has now come in on second and six. Oh, Ben Swing. There it is. Arnold. And Lawrence Arnold has a first down beyond the 35 yard line as you look at this offense for the Jayhawks. Nowitzki is the leader. They call him Dirk. <laughs> I think you can understand why when you see that last name. And the rest of that offense, Neil Grimm, Arnold, Skinner, and Mason Fairchild, the tight end. They'll use three of them. Cardell as well as Jared Casey. Well, we've already seen some of the eye candy by Andy Koltanecki, the offensive coordinator. You're seeing a little bit more now with the shifting, trying to test the eyes of this Wildcat defense. Play fake. Daniels. Nice. And he gets it out to the tight end, Mason Fairchild. He gets it out beyond the 40-yard line to the 41. The Kansas State defense, they have some issues in their perimeter up front. And Udike Uzoma, Uzama has been outstanding throughout his career. Daniel Green, they're happy to have him back and healthy, ready to go. Duke and Moore, they're the back end. You see two of their safeties are out. And at the nickelback, it's Cheatham getting the call. Second and seven. A little bubble screen out. Four and completed. Really good job by Andy Colton. They keep painting this field from left to right. Lawrence Arnold, the ex-receiver who we've already seen involved in the option game, working this time as a receiver, blocking downfield. So they're getting after it, using the breadth and the width, personnel interchanging, giving this Wildcat defense a lot to look at and to store in their memory banks. That was Luke Grimm, number 11, with that catch. Let his team in three straight games earlier this season in receptions. He's the team mover of that repertoire of receiver. There's some pressure. Third and four, nice Daniels. Right over the middle. It's caught. It's to the tight end again. Fairchild for the first down and into Wildcat territory. 16 yards. Yeah, but what made that play work, Tim, was Jared Casey, the wide, the tight end, number 47, did a wonderful job of picking up that pressure. And he's going to need to do that all night long. Watch 47 here. You eyeballing him, and he's seen that pressure coming from the perimeter on the outside edge, and he does a nice job of nailing him right at the point of attack. Khalid Duke, their strong linebacker. They're over 50% on third downs all season long. The aforementioned tight end H-back, Casey. Leading the way again, Tori Lachlan one more time with quality pitch action inside the 35, a seven-yard game. Josh Hayes, the tackle. Well, you can see how this option game really puts pressure again. Casey, that guy again on the edge, working and really releasing it. All of them on the edge. Grimm does a wonderful job of tying his guy up. Maybe hanging on a little bit too long, but he gets away with it. The bottom line is this. These guys, these Jayhawks are really tenacious on the edge. Let's see what they do with this trip's wide formation and see if they can get something going here in the throw game. Second down and three. Daniels with a pump fake. He can run, remember. Underneath, he goes to the check down to Neal. Devin Neal gets inside the 30 to the 29 for another first down. Well, it's amazing, though. I mean, Joe Klanderman, the defensive coordinator for the Wildcats, kind of backed off that pressure after it got picked up the last time. And as a result, you got Jalen Daniels just navigating back there, waiting all the time in the world. If that's going to be the case, you're going to see a lot more inventiveness by Andy Koltanecki, the offensive coordinator for the Jayhawks. They have some noticeable absentees on the back end, Kansas State. Kansas looking to take advantage of that. On first down, Neal again. When we last had Kansas, when they became bowl eligible in that victory against Oklahoma State, he put on a show. Well, Joe Klanderman, the defensive coordinator for Kansas State, really likes his front three. You mentioned him a minute ago. Zama, Huggins, and Matlock, Matlack, and those guys up front, 91, 92, and 97, are absolutely stout. I asked him the question, can he affect enough pressure with those three? And he kind of put that eye down like you do, Tim, and said, hey, look, loose ball. Daniels does manage to get back on top of it. A late flag comes down. Des 
Desmond Purnell, 32, making the stop. But the flag was thrown just as Daniels went to the ground. And the subject of that as they sort this out is those three front linemen. Pressure on the quarterback. I mean, they're, they're active. See what happened here. Thrown really where the tackle was made, which makes me believe that there might have been personal foul. A face, face mask. mask number 32. Yes. Defense. 15 yard penalty yep. from the previous spot. Automatic first down. At first glance, not noticeable, but that had to be the only call to make because it was thrown right where he was thrown yep. down. As a right hand. Yep. Just a tough luck situation mm -hmm. for Burnell. Well, they missed one of those in the Florida Florida State game last night <laughs> at an inopportune time. <laughs> it happens. Can't get anything by you. Yeah, you? well, you know, I was up late. Jeez, I, I had read enough of my reading material. <laughs> caught the end of that game. Well, that sack would have been devastating for them. Ball would have been on the 35. As it is, you see where they are. Jason Bean checks into the game now. Look out. It's going to be Lachlan. There's some eye candy for you, Spence. Yes, sir. Touchdown, Jayhawks. <laughs> Bringing Bean into the game, crossed up K-State. No matter how you add it and subtract it, this is triple option. Old wishbone style. The beautiful thing about what Andy Koltanicki has done, he's removed the would-be blocker and just said, hey, look, you got to go win by yourself. If you can get open and beat that one-on-one -on -one matchup, we're going to score. You see the pitch back is actually going the opposite direction yep. where the pitch fullback is going, and they just say, hey, you make the guy miss. Wonderful job of getting the isolated look that you're looking for. They have a new place kicker. He forget he's a walk-on freshman who took over for Morchilla, who missed a few against Texas. He gets the extra point. That's the first touchdown run of the year. Only his seventh carry, but it's for seven, and we're tied. Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Scoring drive, nine plays, 75 yards, a bit of an answer. And Spencer, talk to me about this eye candy. Well, I love it. It's the triple option. You see the back back here. What this is designed to do is to isolate that guy standing on the hash for the Wildcats. He's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's got one thing to do, and that's to tackle that back. And because of the poor angle that he takes, because he's reading that receiver that was over him initially, he gets beat to the corner. Excellent job, number one, of designing and isolating the guy who takes a poor attack angle on that particular play. Julius Prince just made a poor decision on his ankle and that can happen when you're looking at various different places that's why the eye candy and the eye discipline is so important Tim. Champions Mindset is sponsored by Hampton by Hilton for the stay. Well Tim it's always about the premium on possessions again we brought that into question already when Kansas chose to defer but the premium on possessions means if weather's going to be a condition you want to make sure that every time you get your hands on the ball you have an opportunity to score Kansas is doing that they're matching it but certainly through the special teams game Kansas State responded first with the score so you want to steal possessions from this offense that has so many weapons to hurt you. Deuce Vaughn is the setback with Will Howard. On first and ten from the 25. Pump fake. Oh, Howard pressure. under pressure. Gets it off on the check down to Knowles. Well, he was about to get hammered on the back end. Malcolm Lee was coming in from the backside. It could have been far worse that time. As it is, they lose a yard. Yeah, 99. Malcolm's always on that right side, Tim, and he was coming. Hell bent for election on that play right there, and he just did get that ball off. Screaming off that outside end. Second down, 11. They go bubble screen. Oh, nice defense. He was being blocked by Knowles. Still made the defensive play, getting his arm up to knock it down. That's Craig Young, 15, the linebacker. That was out there to make the play for Kansas. Craig did a great job of busting that play up. But Knowles did a better job of turning into a defender on that play and breaking it up because I'm telling you, he hits his head on the goalpost going the opposite direction. He works through Knowles and gets that hand up. He knows where the ball wants to go, having your eyes set on the quarterback and then timing that hand up just to deflect it. Oh, that's an excellent defensive play. Third down and long. Pressure on the inside for Howard to deal with. This one is caught and it's to center. 
who's become a real target in this offense in recent weeks. His star has grown, as has Howard's, in recent weeks for Kansas State. Well, we know Sammy Wheeler, number 19, the, the true Y in this scheme is also pretty salty, too. But, but the two of them, Tim, that Y scene becomes really tantalizing for Will Howard. He's got a lot of options to go with. Now let's see what he does with this trip formation here. First and 10, markers down, the pass is caught by Cade Warner, 85. He's out to the 44-yard line, two yards shy of a first. We'll check on the flag. Well, that bunch formation so tough to defend. Our referee is Scott Campbell tonight. Our replay official is Jeff Hansen. Lance is locked in, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> What's this call? After a long conversation, you begin to worry Legal if they got off the field. Defense. Yep. That penalty is declined. Right. Result of the play, second and one. They will take the play rather than the penalty as they could not get their players off the field. Too many out there at the snap. Got to hurry in this game. Lance Leipold is in disbelief. <laughs> well, a lot of that's just because of all of the personnel the last couple of weeks Kansas State has shown. Second down and one. Deuce. I don't know if there's a player in the country that plays with more joy than Deuce Vaughn. And he's selfless too, Tim. All those weapons that you mentioned a few minutes ago that have emerged. Vince Sennett and company, he's having to split some of those carries with them. Yep. Son of a scout and a guy that told him, as a very young player, due to his size, you'll never be a wow guy. So you're going to have to work to become a wow guy. Your size won't <laughs> wow anybody. Here comes a fire blitz off the edge. Yep. And the slant. Whoa, what a Caught by Knowles, and he was dumped in a hurry at the 42 of KU by Burroughs again. A gain of 11 and a first down. Burroughs is in there again. Press coverage off the edge. Els, Knowles goes up for that one. And on that edge, well, I'll tell you what, they blocked this particularly well on the inside, Tim, but that's what allowed it. There are a lot of bodies around Knowles. He's attracting attention. All that means is somebody else has got to be open. Well, you don't think of Howard as a runner. They're going to have to throw it a lot more with Howard at quarterback. But he's been running well when he's yeah, had to. He, he may have to occasionally run. Yes, he will. This time he stays alive, looking oh, long, he's wide right. open. Wow. No one is there. Sammy Wheeler, touchdown, K-State. Well, you just mentioned his name a moment ago after Senate made a catch. And this is a bust, an absolute bust. And credit Howard for keeping the play alive. 42 yards. Howard's 12th touchdown pass. Wheeler's second touchdown of the year. Tight ends are going to be beneficiaries in both of these offenses. Mm. You'll never have an easier touchdown catch. The Wildcats retake the lead in what could be a whale of a track meet. Couple of quick strikes by both offenses. This one, 75 yards, only seven plays. And Wheeler on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. Gosh, was just a couple of years ago, Spencer, we came in here. Skyler was hurt and a young Will Howard came in. What a difference becoming a veteran has meant to him. And here's the return from Trevor Wilson. He's in a world of hurt. A and flag. the flag comes down late. They might even back them up even further. Mm -hmm. Thrown in an area where you see a block During the return, in the back, perhaps. Illegal block in the back, number 45. Yeah. Return team, half the distance to the goal, first down. Let's go back to the touchdown, Spencer. Tim, I absolutely love YC against this cover two look right here. You can see Sammy Wheeler here, and then here's the guy that's responsible for him in the deep third of the field. 
This is Kobe Bryant. Kobe's supposed to be dropping back to that third, but something got his attention. He came off of it because the quarterback was scrambling and staying true to the vertical concept. Wheeler stays on that route and just waiting for that ball to be thrown right to him. Howard finding, pulling it down, moving away from the pressure, does an excellent job of finding his receiver. That's about knowing the route combinations, and just because you get flushed away from it, you can still go back to it. Unbelievable execution. Special teams issues oh, for Kansas. Look at this problem. Uh, they, may get lucky here. they may get lucky here they because may. of the movement yep, by Wildcats. We'll see if it's a uh, procedure. Ball start, number 89. Oh, they got bailed out Offense. by the false start. Out the distance of the goal. Wow. Still first down. That is a big bailout yep. because of the false start. Mm -hmm. Fairchild was guilty. And this is where this crowd really becomes an issue. Well, playing clean is something that Coach Leipold told us that they needed to do, Tim. Having to win in the margins because of their injury situation. All that means is you can't make mistakes. First and 12 after the penalty. Neal looking to bounce out. Give them a little bit of room. Mm -hmm. Gets out past the 5 to the 6. Josh Hayes. Comes up to make the stop. The free safety who's been outstanding throughout his career. That's a nice little three-yard gain, team. It had a chance to actually be more than that, and it was a wonderful job of that off guard coming around and giving them exactly what they need. And again, any way you can bring them down, man, try to bring them down. Whether it's the pants, <laughs> anything like, hey, put those britches up, man. And you see those guys walking around these days, they wear their britches like that, but I don't think they're supposed to do that. No, that would game. be too big of a hitch in your getting up. <laughs> Second down and nine. Fairchild moves over. Oh, there you see the fake wow. pitch, and that one's thrown away. It looked like a miscommunication on the route that was being run. Well, I think that's a case of trying to do too much in the end zone. You're backed up against your own end zone, Tim. You're trying to square and ask your quarterback to turn his shoulders. Inside zone read, and then set those shoulders because of the pressure. Upfield, that's what does it. Yeah. Again, a guy defender in your lap, that's feet, that's Uzama. That left defensive end in his face. That's what caused Daniels to correct himself and try to get rid of that ball. Uh, teams have been doubling Felix and UDK Uzama all year long. His sacks are down, but that's because of the concentration teams have had on him. Third down nine. Nice setup. This pass almost picked off. And it was 23 right in position. Brits. And it looks like we've got a flag in the end zone. Well, that may be holding Tim. And if it is, it could be a safety. If it was holding in the end zone, it's two. Critical play, critical call coming up. Holding number 77. Offense. Mm. That foul occurred in the end zone. The result of yep, that yep. is a safety. Misery loves company, and it all starts with poor execution on special teams. Bryce Cable, the number 77, the right tackle, is the guy that they got to him. He's got his arms wrapped outside, and he's got a chipper on the outside with working with him. Again, Devin Neal, the running back, is there to help him out, so no, no need to hold to that guy. He's got a, some extra help to help you in those situations, and that's unfortunate. Well, that really puts you in a world of hurt. Lance Leipold asking for a little bit of help there, also chatting with Dean, among others. He's talking to Kenny Logan again, just some of the leaders on this team to kind of help them sort through some of this stuff to get his guys focused. Yep. Well, we see those uh, miscues, Spencer, and they've yep. really been. It's a byproduct of concentration and to some extent perhaps the, the rain that's falling down. We certainly saw a backup slip on the on the Burroughs fumble to open this game, and now the mistake made in the end zone. Does that go back to that decision that they made early, Tim, to defer? Yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, if they had picked it off on the 20-yard line, would you have still mm -hmm. taken the safety? That's another mm -hmm. thing to think about. That's the point. Yeah. You wouldn't be backed up there. Yeah. So now they got to punt it. You figure Kansas State would get quality field position and an opportunity to really take command of this game, which is something Kansas absolutely cannot handle with the injuries that they have 
and the lack of depth from an offensive standpoint. Well, the good news, if there is, if you're a Jayhawk fan, is as poorly as they played, not playing within the margins of yeah. the game, yeah. they are still within fighting distance here. That's it's it's impressive that they're this close. Knowles is standing at his 15-yard line, a pretty good boot. And here he comes. He's dangerous, Tim. He is. Catapults to the 39-yard line. So really good field position. And the fans here at Kansas State are all over the Jayhawks, particularly when they're backed up. And they have been. That young man's really enjoying it. My legs are itching. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. And by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. This is the main thoroughfare in downtown mini Manhattan. I feel like you're in Dodge City. When yeah. You know, I did roll up here. And we dined at the Wine Dive. That was wonderful last night. And the K-State band put on a nice show for us in their annual pub crawl. They actually came to our hotel a couple of years oh, yeah. ago, if you recall. I thought they were following us. I don't think a band works any harder for their institution <laughs> than the K-State band. Oh, they're good. Man. Now, that was disrupted right away. Mm -hmm. As uh, Knowles was the intended receiver, it would be second and ten. They'll understand clearly why they want to get the ball to Knowles. He's a difference maker, and, but they've got a lot of other weapons, and Will Howard's shown an aptitude for getting the ball to all of them effectively. Young and these Kansas Jayhawks are going to try to be disruptive today. You know... When you look at the stats, especially of late, Spencer, it's hard not to think that you wouldn't just line up in an I formation and run between the tackles against KU. They have given up a ton of yardage. Absolutely. On the ground. Vaughn. Nice. Uh, hello. <laughs> How do you do? Why don't you, Timmy? Double deuce. Takes it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. He's run down by Logan. That's 31 yards for the K-State star. Well, Tim's been watching that tape of Texas and what they did on this KU defense. This ran through them. Their top runner went for 243 and, again, makes it appetizing. There he is coming out of the backfield. He's going to be incredible at the next level coming out of the backfield. Yeah, you got to find him. You know, he he's, he's kind of sits back there and and disappears and here he is right now he's got a convoy out in front of him blocking that's christian duffy and company when those big hogs get in front of this guy right here man he's the difference maker he's so strong and hopefully get a chance to show you some of the assets that really puts him above in my opinion he's got that little jump stop juke move that will leave you grasping for air second down and 10. vaughn joined by dj giddens who's really looked good of late number 31 in motion nice quick slant and it's good nice. Well, it was right there for Philip Brooks, but the senior from Lee Summit, Missouri, looked up for that uh, end zone a little too quickly that time. Well, there's a throw right there. It's a quick slant, Tim, and he lets it climb on his pads, right? Yep. How many times we talk about receivers plucking the ball out of the air, so if it does carry him, it has a chance to bounce a second time and you can catch it. But if you let it climb on those pads, even though they're a lot smaller than they used to be when we played, they still bounce and ricochet. No doubt. Yeah, they're basically playing in shells versus <laughs> absolutely what you played in back in the day. Mm -hmm. well, he was it. looking for his very first touchdown, and that's what cost him. Third and ten. Howard. It is caught inside the 20. Move the sticks. Cade Warner. Warner out of Scottsdale, Arizona, the senior, one of the many that was honored before the game. Yeah, they're, they're picking on Kobe Bryant over there at the corner position. He's playing off coverage here. Had a, like, a little tandem look there, and he just kind of pushes up the field. He's got leverage on the outside, but when that guy squats on him, you got to turn with him in, in concert. For the corner in the end zone, knocked away beautifully by Kenny Logan. Vaughn, the intended receiver. That was a textbook wheel route that was broken up by Logan. Well, the senior out of Mendez, and I'm telling you, he shows you the athleticism and the ability to get turned around. And Lance Lightpole was over there talking about him on the last offensive series for a reason. He's a leader on this team. He gets that hand up right there, and what probably would have been caught ball by Vaughn on that particular play. Yeah. Will Howard's got a deft touch on that football. He really does. I, he's got every pass that a quarterback would want in mm -hmm. his arsenal right mm -hmm. now. Second and ten. Out of the gun. He keeps it this time. 
And he gets it down to the 11 yard line. Craig Young makes the stop. Craig does a wonderful job from his strong side linebacker position of putting his head on the outside to create leverage, right? Howard not known necessarily for his mobility, but by playing on the outside and making sure he does only has one option, and that is to go inside. Young gives himself an opportunity to make a good play. They've Excellent kept, football. They've kept that play in the package, even though Martinez is not available. That's, that's how K-State got off to such a great start when Adrian was at quarterback. Third down and six. There it is to Giddens. And he's going to be taken out at the four. D.J. Giddens pulled out by Lorenzo McCaskill. A transfer from the Raging Cajuns in Louisiana down in Lafayette. A gain of eight, and it's first and goal. Yes, Southfield A&T. And he did a wonderful job of just sitting inside that play. And I, I think if you got him back, this got the ability to make an inside move to you, you play it just like he did, using the sideline as his friend. All these miscues by Kansas on special teams have put them on their heels. K-State with an opportunity to grab a lead of three scores if they can punch it in. Well, this play has no been so awesome. Again. Oh, my goodness. He walked in. Look these jet sweeps right here, right? You got a guy that's on the outside playing it with nice leverage, and he's going to run right past him. This is something that by the time you recognize what's happening, he still hadn't figured out that Knowles is past him with the football. Love the fact that they're giving these jet sweeps really quick as opposed to those pronounced, long, easy-to-read versions of it. Two times he's gotten the ball. Two times he scored touchdowns. And the K-State lead, technically 16 which would mean a couple of touchdowns and a couple of two-pointers, but this now puts them in command of this game, no question. Yeah, watch Lonnie Phelps here, number 47, Tim. That jet sweep, boom, it's in his pocket now. He, Phelps' eyes are still trained inside. I mean, he's passed him his nose quick as a hiccup, man, and he's into that corner. It's all because of being able to read and react. And now Kansas has got some eye candy, but so does Kansas State, and that's one of the new wrinkles. You're seeing it at the next level as well. That jet sweep is not as pronounced. That quarterback comes, and once he clears that set, that ball is in the belly of that would-be runner, whether it's a receiver or running back, and the defensive ends have got to be trained on that. Well, Knowles had a lot of carries a year ago. In fact, uh, 15 of them for 106 yards. But coming into tonight's game, just two carries on the season. One of them, though, a 75-yard score in the opener against the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. But, boy, that play just has not been, as they say, Kansas has not set the edge against it quite yet. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, you got to know that there's an edge that's there. I mean, if the guy's runner's past you already, you're absolutely right. you got to set the edge. But if the guy you're, that's threatening the edge has already passed you, my gosh, that's an issue of pre-snap reading. Well, he's had uh, four carries and three touchdowns rushing this year. Only a couple of touchdowns this season. 23-7, only two touchdown catches this season for him. Wilson is awaiting, and it's a touchback, a fair catch made. They'll bring it out. Well, let's take a look at some college football mayhem with our mayhem moment, sponsored by Allstate. It, it began with the Burroughs Muff. Echo Boydo got on top of it. And then wide open on a busted coverage and a beautiful ad-lib job by his quarterback. <laughs> Sammy Wheeler takes it in. Then the mistake occurs one more time. In the end zone with a hold, a safety, and then with a short field, the Wildcats go in yet again. Nice count on me. Trying to get downhill in that run game. He stopped by Julius Prince. So now it's going to be second and short, and you can get creative. If you're Andy Koltanecki, you can get creative now with this down. Do some things that opens up, and maybe some motion. Even that triple option can be very valuable in this particular place because what it does, Tim, it neutralizes this active defensive front. And Duke Uzama, Huggins, Madlock, all those guys that wreak havoc from those three and two and zero techniques get neutralized. 
Little bubble screen goes out to Kevin Terry. And again, this is the kind of offense that he can run, Andy Kotelnicki, with Jalen Daniels after that gain of six. There he is. Yep. One of the most effervescent personalities you'll find. He's been around quite a while with uh, Lance Leipold and has come with every stop that uh, Lance has made. He's been with him. And uh, Abroyles... I, I thought he should have been. Yeah, I, I thought he should have been a finalist. Yep. He was a candidate, but I thought he was worthy of of being a semifinalist with that incredible start. They just got banged up and they mm -hmm. couldn't run the same offense for much of the season. Neal takes it ahead past the 40 to the 42 yard line. They won't stop doing what they're doing as long as Jalen Daniels can go as the first quarter comes to an end. And, and Spencer, they're going to try quickly to get one more playoff mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. here. How do you think Daniels looks? I think he's looked fine right now, showing no signs of that. That injury that yeah. kept him sidelined for nearly yeah. four months. So they decide to wait until the quarter comes to an end. Well, last week, K-State scored 28 in the first quarter against West Virginia. Tonight, second most this season, taking advantage of those Jayhawks miscues. Our Pacific Life game summary, sponsored by Pacific Life. Creating financial security for more than 150 years. Howard out quickly in this game. Daniels hasn't played poorly, but their special teams has. And Wildcats have taken advantage off those turnovers and mental errors. And lead it by 16. And Daniels isn't playing bad. Six of seven. No. You know, so he's been judicious with the football and taking care of it. Just those early mistakes. 83 yards for Kansas offensively. First downs are even. Nice play action. Daniels in trouble. This is what he can do. He can beat you with his legs. Yep. And here he goes. Gets a nice block. Stays down the sidelines to get a few more yards. And that was a really outstanding shield by Lawrence Arnold, the wide receiver, that enabled Daniels to get about 15 to 20 more of what was a 25-yard run. Watch the proximity of Eli Huggins, 92, and then watch the separation happen right here. I mean, he just distanced himself so quick, and he made it look effortless, Tim, on the other end and got extra yardage at the back end of this, understanding where he is on the football field, understanding that Cheatham is in front of him. Put the ball in another hand. Other than that, it was an excellent job of navigating. Well, getting we got a ruling on the field. Snap foul. It was a run for a first down. Previous play is under further review. Well, they're going to see if he stepped out, apparently. And they're questioning the spot. Again, that, that block by Lawrence Arnold cannot go overlooked. The sophomore, redshirt sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. See that one right there? Yeah, That's he, pretty good. Yeah, he's doing a nice job on the edge. And again, we've, we've noted him a couple of times today. Julius Brents, that's who he's the, I, blocking out there on the corner. I don't think the heel touched. Well, it wasn't the left one. Nope. And I don't think the heel touch is there. Uh, the toes up. Yeah. I mean, you got to find, it's got to be obvious. And uh, I believe if they had ruled him out there, Spencer, no. they would say, you know what? Play calls as stands. But I don't know that that's definitive enough to change it. But our replay official, Jeff Hansen, will take a long look at it. Well, if he's looking at what we're looking at, he isn't going to be able to change that. Let's get, this, get this guy out of the way so we can see. <laughs> get the get back coach. Where's the get back coach? Not there. Not there. No, it's not not there. there. It's there. Well, I think he, he never stepped out before. After no, review, so ruling on the field stands. First down. The runner did not step yep. out of bounds. Good job. Gee, we didn't even have to get Dean involved on that. I don't know. Dean, though. <laughs> Dean. It's been a pretty clean day with all the the upsets early in games played all day long. We need yeah, Dean for our Q rating. Yeah. The numbers go up and Dean shows up. <laughs> the ladies like Dean. Devin Neal is in the backfield out of the shotgun, first and ten. This is a huge offensive drive nice for Kansas. That oh, he got to keep clean. Incomplete. Luke Grimm was the intended receiver. Well, Tim, you know, you can't give up on this play here. You've got to continue to come on. Grimm was the intended receiver, but watch his eyes. Daniel's eyes is fine, but Grimm's eyes comes off. It was tipped by well, That's what it was. It was yeah. tipped, so it's not Grimm's fault. 
It's my bad. Good, good, great angle by our camera folks. That ball was tipped. That's the reason why Grimm's eyes came off of it. Khalid Duke, outstanding linebacker, made the play there for Kansas State. Second and ten. Just a three-man rush. Daniels shoots nice. it for the tight end Fairchild. And he is polished off at the 23. Call it the 22 by VJ Payne. Phenomenal hit by VJ. VJ is one of those guys that's stepping up because of all the injuries back there at the safety spot. And watch VJ Payne delivers a little pain here. Boy, I tell you, he puts that shoulder proper, got its head seated properly where it needed to be. That's an excellent job there. All right, Spencer. Bean has come back into the game. He lines up in a slot to the top of your screen. Let's see how much attention he attracts, though. They're still going to play in man. Goes in motion again, as he did the last time. Daniels with time. Checks uh, down to Bean, and he dropped it. Now, that's what Bean took his eyes off of. Yep. It, and it's just one of those situations where, as a quarterback, you're not used to getting the ball in that, and certainly not used to getting that kind of contact that a receiver would anticipate. Bean just didn't settle that ball in. Watch his eyes come off of it. Watch his helmet. Yep. You see his helmet start to turn inside. Heard, heard those footsteps. Yeah, she was scary. <laughs> DJ Payne had just <laughs> lowered the boom. On their tight end Fairchild, the play presented. Second and ten. Daniels on the curl. It's complete inside the 20 to Arnold. The sure-handed receiver has Austin, five on that play. Austin Moore was right there in his hip pocket, number 41, the Will linebacker who got in that place. But that was a nice job of, of placing that ball right between the two zone defenders. And that's what you're trying to do, split the difference, give the receiver the maximum opportunity to catch it unimpeded. Remember, Kansas is running a little sketchy in place kicking. Mm -hmm. Portilla missed a few. They've gone to the freshman. They may be in four-down territory. This is, a, this is a tough formation to defend right here with the three receivers. They built it to four, and there was no adjustment. Daniels underneath, caught by Neal. What a nice move Devin made to get it down to the 11-yard line. That's six yards and a first down. I love how Andy Kultanicki built that because he, he put Devin Neal out in a four-receiver set with the others, and when he moved back, there was no visible adjustment, which meant that you're going to have an opportunity to get the ball on the screen back underneath. It's just an excellent design play. Possibly could have got more on it, but those active defenders underneath, along with Payne for the third play in a row, involved in it. Watch Neal. This is a little bit of a Deuce Vaughn maneuver he made after the catch. First and 10 from the 11. Daniels for the corner. It's grim. It's incomplete. Mm. Tim, this Kansas team does a lot of things well. They convert third downs, and they also score a lot when they get in the red zone. And it's somewhere around 80% or close to it. They are very efficient when they get down in this area. So right now, we're going to get a chance to see how effective this run-stop defense is for the Wildcats. That was good coverage, too, by Brents. Mm -hmm. Brents has been doing a good job all night. So second down and 10. It's raining harder now. Intermittent, really, throughout the game but a bit harder at this moment. Quick pitch to Neal. Look out. Devin Neal, touchdown. Well, it looked like that quick snap surprised K-State. Yeah, Dominic Cooney and, and then Earl Bostick and company guys. To watch them, the left top guard attack. Watch them pull, and they're going to go to the left, and they do a nice job. Both of them pull. Get up on that. That's a nasty look right there. When you see 67 covering up a guy that's trying to block you on the back end of that, that's tough. T.J. Smith at the strong safety. One of the fill-in guys that's back there because of the injury situation, Tim, could not handle that pulling guard. All right, here's Peter Gerdes with the extra point. The left footer sneaks it through the right upright. And it's 23-14. to 14. Boy, they got a lot of out pitches in this offense. Oh, don't man, they're collecting. They're going to have to score a lot to win this one. Sunflower Showdown is just that right now. <laughs> Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. A nine-point lead for Kansas State, and as Chris Kleiman told us, Kansas is coming into this rivalry game with house money. They've already had a historic season, and they're now to within nine 
after that touchdown drive, which was a must after falling behind by 16 in large measure because of some mental errors offensively and some problems with their special team. And as a result, this game is closer than the score would indicate, yes. Tim. As a result of that, you start looking at time of possession, and if you're KU, you've got hope. Knowles is going to bring it out. Very confident in his skill set. As a flag. The flag comes down as he goes down. We'll check on the marker here from Jeff Hansen. Thrown in an area where you see usually either a clip or a block in the back. During the return, personal foul, illegal blindside block, mm. number 31. Return team, half the distance of the goal, first down. That's a big one right yes, there, 15 yards, Tim. So here's the block in the pedal in the back right here. That's going to be Clifton. Clifton. Yep. yep, Jake Clifton, reserve linebacker. They made it. And there you see the conversation. Always coaching. Special teams is an area where you're going to see it a lot. And then now it's packed up K-State, much as it did Kansas a bit earlier. Vaughn and Giddens both in. Run! Vaughn and Marshall. Oh, what a blow up in the back. Wow. Big time problems there. And that was Lonnie Phelps coming through along with Malcolm Lee, the bookend defensive ends, collaborating. Yeah, 47 from Mount Hetley. Just wonderful job of identifying this. Again, he sees that tackle, pull away. He's got edge responsibility, no threat, so he can go straight to the ball carry for a negative one-yard loss. Yeah, he just uh, welcomed him to Malcolm Lee. Mm -hmm. Threw him right into his fellow defensive end. Second 11. I tell you what, he is hauling down that line. As yes, he is. He is on a fever pitch. Yes, Lonnie he Phelps. Is. Eric Gilliard this time, number 13. 5'11", 230-pound redshirt senior backup to Rich Miller. Yeah, now Colin Klein's got to do something about this because 47 is coming. Now, this is the opposite side of it. Yep. That's flow and reacts. But 47 is the one that's chasing these plays in the backside. So if you're Colin Klein, the offensive coordinator for Kansas State, you want to run at this guy to kind of slow him down a little bit. All right, a huge play here for the Kansas defense. With K-State backed up on third down and 12. Three out of four on third downs tonight. Well, press again. Underneath they go, and why not Vaughn? What a green in front oh, of him. Boy, he is subtle. Look out. He's he gone. might take it the He's distance. Gone. Double deuce. He could go. Pushed out inside the 15 by Melo Dotson. What a remarkable explosive for Vaughn. And Dotson saves a touchdown on an 80-yard scamper. Yeah, Melo Dotson's got some jets now. He's got big end speed. Now, when we look at Deuce Vaughn, we know he's quick, but he's quick, quick in that natural soft spaces, and then he explodes. He gets to his top speed very, very quickly, but the guy that's chasing him down has got some big end speed. In traffic, there's no one better in America right now, in my opinion. Deuce does an excellent job of getting the most that he possibly can, but man, if you're trying to square this guy up, his core, his middle is so strong, you better make sure you're holding on to something because he is wound tight. Dodson had an outstanding angle and took advantage. Giddens this time, and he's ridden out. What a golden opportunity missed again by the Kansas defense, though. Had him backed up and turning to Deuce Vaughn on a little inside screen, a huge play to put them Kansas State in scoring position again. And a chance to do what we talked about now with 41 rushing yards and, and 82 receiving yards for 123. He's, <laughs> he's always he's owned this team over the last couple of years, Tim, and he's averaged over 100 plus. He's already there. K-State looking to make it 14 in a row in this rivalry. Uh, no, that is caught by Brooks. Josh Brooks finally gets his touchdown. You know he wanted it badly. He felt like he had won in his grasp that he dropped a bit earlier on a slant. Not this time. Well, here he is on the inside, Tim, and he does a nice job of slow playing this, understanding what Knowles did for him, just running an off route yeah. to take that traffic away, and he just found a soft spot and turned his head around on an outcut, a basic route. That's sacrificial play right there by Knowles, understanding how yeah. that play is designed for his teammate. Yeah, he drew some double coverage behind him. You're right. And the extra point from Zentner is good. Don't blink. These two offenses are really rolling. 
Started with double deuce on the check down. Who knew what to do with it? Dotson saved it briefly, but then Howard knew what to do. And this time, Brooks held on. Want updates on the action? Just tell Siri, show me college football scores. Thank you, Siri. Kansas now. As Brooks makes his fourth touchdown reception of the season, he's already been able to get it done on the ground. This is his fourth catch. This is the third down play. And, Spencer, it could be the biggest play of this game when we reflect in the fourth quarter. Yes, Deuce Vaughn doing exactly what he does best, Tim, and that's blow things up. Just as soon as you think you got this team kind of dialed in and how to defend them, 22 is the out pitch, man. He can make it happen. Logan showed great speed to get to him on the back end of it, but not before the damage was done. Now that play occurred on a third down and 12. Well, check out Ram Trucks Power Player on college football on Fox social platforms to see who's dominating on the field. Well, the rain is dominating right now, Tim. It's, it's coming down a little bit heavier than it was when we started this affair, and that's going to be a big factor. It clearly was yeah. early with the muff return. Yeah, that began when Burroughs muffed it. Kansas scored on their first offensive series, but some mistakes after that. Douglas Emelian is coming to the game at wide receiver number five. Daniels has been the quarterback throughout. And here comes the option. He'll keep it this time, and he gets wrapped up. We'll find out about Daniels' health after he holds on to it a few times. He was hammered that time by Austin Moore, 41. And he also got some help from Boydo. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the option into the short side of the field. I'm just not a big fan because too many bodies are on that side of it. When you're on that left hash, you want to be running that option up to your right to the wide side of the field so that you can take advantage of the spacing that this offensive scheme, the option, is predicated on. Not a fan of that in the short side of the field. Second and ten with trips to the top of your screen. Out of the gun. Daniels nice. looking for Grimm. Got He's him. got it at the 45 and is out of bounds. Well, it, Luke Grimm had had a couple of moments when he gave up on his route. Josh Hayes in coverage, but another explosive play, 33 yards. Yeah, the senior free safety, Josh Hayes, was out there covering him, and it's man coverage. The switch route got him. The switch route got him. He faded on it, and it just did a wonderful job. The Daniels of placing that up there where his receiver could catch it. Wonderful job. Nice little, little push off a little yep. to moor himself away from the would-be defender. But I think that's excellent execution. Well, the, with the kind of jousting that we see, that's uh, worthy of a no-call. Nice. Neal. Devin Neal so dangerous. He's running well, too, and he was nicked up coming into this game. B.J. Payne with the stop. So look at that previous pass. Daniels is on target tonight. He really is, and the subtlety of the way he moved it to get open in that and avoid the ball being blocked away. And just giving his receiver ample space to work with to adjust to that ball. I mean, he's a, this team is different when he's at the position. We know that for sure. But the only question was, could he remain healthy enough as he makes his week back from that four-week hiatus? Well, he certainly took a pounding on that first play from scrimmage on this drive. Nice. Ooh, look at this. Inside, flipping it to the tight end, Casey. That's Jared Casey. Original walk-on, the tight end gets ahead for four. Payne makes the stop. That's the young man that got the NIL deal with Applebee's after he caught the winning score against Texas in Austin a year ago. Lane Bill's finest. He did yeah. a wonderful job. He's been doing it all tonight. He's been blocking. He's been, I mean, on some of those wham plays, he's been involved in yeah. that. Now the uh, Longhorns are his biggest fans. Mm -hmm. They would like a Kansas victory. It would put... Coach Sark and his Texas Longhorns in the Big 12 title game. More option. Look at this. Daniels, a beautiful fake. He may go inside the 20, thrown down at the 17 by Payne. Inside option, Tim, and, it, and it's, he's reading the defensive end. That's exactly what he's doing. If the end crashes, he pulls the ball off and doesn't give it to the, the first guy. So you see number 90 is a 29 that comes down there, gets Washington down in the wash, and he says, hey, that's my cue. If he comes and crashes, I can walk around him, and I have a one-man advantage on the back end. So excellent read and react. We've seen him in the throw game on the previous play, and now in the run game, he's a difference maker. Khalid Duke was... Uh 
the fooled Wildcat there. Linebacker number 29. First and 10 now from the 19. Neo tries to cut it back. They get about a yard, and that's all. Brendan Mott, 38. Another one of those guys that's uh, benefited, along with Eli Huggins and Nate Matlock, from all of the attention paid by offensive lines to Anudike Uzama. It's freed these guys up to make some plays for Joe Klanderman's defense. Well, they're natural bubbles in this front, you know, because you got three big guys up front, and it's designed for these linebackers to really make those kind of plays, Tim. Second down and nine. Lawrence Arnold loves man-to-man -man coverage, and he moves up to the top of your screen. Grimm into the slot. And there they nice go stop, in that bro. direction for Grimm. And they're going to have a marker in the end zone. That'll go against Boydo. He's lobbying, but it looked to be a good call. He held him. Looked like a hold rather than an interference. We'll see what the official call is. He was coming back for it. You see this a lot on balls that are under thrown. 25. Defense. Right there. After this, is a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, here's the thing. Grimm is trying to come back to the ball, right? That's what got him. And, and, and I think... The pressure, two things made that play. So it's kind of a looks on. Nick Allen, number 52, the linebacker, was putting pressure on Daniels, who avoided it, to get the ball in the general area so as to draw the attention of the defender. But watch the pressure here. Watch 52. Delay blitz. He's coming. Boop, a little subtlety. Get it out. And so just by getting the ball in the vicinity allows that play to be made in the to draw the penalty. That happened to Ohio State a number of times today. Nice. Neil. Touchdown, Jayhawks. These defenses cannot solve the opposition's offense. Neal's ninth touchdown, his second tonight. And as KU continues to do this, Tim, that decision to defer becomes even more and more important sure as does. they continue to score. Now, think about this, Spencer. A lot of coaches will tell you if you go four by four, if you play well in the last four minutes of the second quarter, get the ball to open the third, you can change the fortunes in a game. We'll see if it works out that way. This extra point right down the middle for the young kicker. But Devin Neal is healthy. Jalen Daniels is healthy. Kansas has life. Indeed. up on the State Farm Halftime. TCU still unbeaten after making a huge statement. USC tries to keep their playoff hopes alive against Notre Dame and Michigan. Boy, they came away with the biggest win of the year. Tim and Spencer, it's back to you. No energy issue in the studio tonight, oh, Spencer. Snap. Oh, snap. Why you work in the uh, plaid? Show. Oh, man. He's resplendent in plaid tonight. Nice. He and Peterson, they recruited uh, Papa Davis again today. <laughs> Petros is going to be with us I'm next week. I'm looking forward to that. Bring the Spanakoba to with you, my friend. Nothing more exciting than the blue field of Boise and Petros at the same time. And that's going to go through for a touchback. Spencer and I will be on hand for the Mountain West title game next week in beautiful Boise, Idaho. Fresno State and Boise State. That's going to be a good one. Man. First time we've known what we we're going to do. That one, yeah. Nine or ten days out. <laughs> <laughs> that's because the landscape is flat. Yeah, it's you know what? Man. We have had more six-day holes. That's inside baseball terminology, mm -hmm. meaning that deciding on what games would be televised, you couldn't make the decision until after you saw the preceding week's games. That's because of the balance and newfound parity in the college game. First and ten. Kansas State. Howard's been outstanding tonight. First really overthrown pass to Senate this time. He rushed that one just yeah, a he, bit. he really did. But the pressure was in his face. Understand why he does it. But that's what separates the elite receivers, catchers, throwers. Understanding where the pressure's coming from yep. and to attenuate your execution in light of that pressure. Yep. Barry Hill had a lot to do with that pass being overthrown. Taiwan Barry Hill. Outside linebacker. Second and ten. Ball. Well, they've stuffed that run a couple of times. They've been getting seven, eight yards at a chunk. We mentioned earlier, statistically, this Kansas defense has been carved apart by the run game. 
tonight, though, Kansas State has been versatile in their offensive approach as well. well both these teams have kind of navigated as if the, the, went, the rain was not really a factor. No. They, they've worked their respective schemes to the limits. Third and seven, Kansas shows a little pressure coming. Nice pickup. Yep, and here it comes. That ball is on the ground. Young made the hit. The ball popped free. I'm not sure that it was a pass. I believe it was a fumble, and it's uh, Cooper Beebe that got on top of it, and that saved a fumble. Here's the pressure. Deuce is going to try to get that chip, but he knows he's going to get involved oh, yeah. in the, the receiver as a, a screen. Fumble. That's a fumble. It's a, it's a fumble because the hand doesn't go forward, but Deuce Vaughn was trying to get that pressure dampened just a little bit. So they'll Fortunate. Have to, they'll have to punt it away on fourth and 12. Burroughs is back deep. Remember, he had he's the got a foot earlier. Yeah. And I'll let this one bound, and that is a huge kick. What a punt. Zentner has been one of the most valuable players on this Kansas State team over the last month. 72 yards on that boot. How strong is that? He, pra bird, he practically kicked that one all the way to Topeka. <laughs> That's where the young man is from. Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Well, Ty Zentner has put on a show 72 yards here. Remember, he took over for Chris Tennant after the poor night of field goal kicking against TCU. So he's doing both now. And that was incredible. You could be turned if you want. The ball was so high, man. I think he knocked one of those Western metal locks out of the guy, <laughs> out of this guy, man. He was, well, that ball was high. Yeah, and Burroughs, I'm sure, was also thinking a little bit, I'm backing up again. I don't know that I want to feel this. <laughs> you know, after what happened on the opening boot of the night. Douglas Emelian has checked into the game at wide receiver. 332 left. You know they want to see a long drive here. On the check down, they go to Terry, 84. And on that third progression, he gets it out just shy of the 10-yard line. Nuances, Daniel selling that play almost like a back. You know, he, he tucks it yeah. just to kind of freeze everybody so that he gives himself enough cushion to separate so he can make a completion. I remember when we got ready for the UCLA-Utah game, Jeff Kelly went on and on about Jalen Daniels. Gosh, how did we let that guy out of California? <laughs> he wasn't that far away from mm -hmm. us. Pick up of seven, so it's second down and three. Nice. Lachlan in trouble. And down inside the five. Loss on the play. A four. Now that's Bryce Cableton's fault. Number 77, the right tackle. I mean, he's got to get that first guy off that edge and the perimeter. Then you get the one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that option game would work. Spencer, this is a huge play here. Mm -hmm. If Kansas has to boot it, you know K-State is just going to be all lathered up. Oh, they got great field position. Oh, yeah. Before the end of the half, that punt really changes mm -hmm. the narrative on the conclusion of this first half. Instantly flip the field. Third down, 11. Daniels shoots it. It's caught by Arnold. But they're going to spot him a yard shy of the first down. He's going to be close. Yep. Fourth down. A gain of 10, but they had lost that yardage on the pitch. Mm -hmm. It was 11 yards needed rather than 10, and a timeout by Kansas State. And Jalen's upset. He believes that that route should have been a little further out. They know the importance of this, too. The good news is they don't have to punt it from deep in their end zone. But given the circumstances, the Wildcats should get outstanding field position again to close with a score here. And because of the punt, you're now in a situation where if you're Kansas State, this version of Kansas State is going to take a shot. They've got a minute 52 to work. Oh, yeah. And they're going to have plenty of opportunities to take a shot at the end zone. Reese Vernon will boot it away. That's Phillip Brooks standing at his own 48. End over end. Got a great kick. Does get a Kansas roll. And they need every bit of it because the Wildcats will still have the ball 
near midfield at the 47. 39 yard boot. Uh, Will Howard has been as hot tonight as he has been the last month. Well, he's been able to stay open and find Wheeler and company on those wide seam routes. It's because he's been active. It's not because KU hadn't brought pressure. They have. He's found Knowles and company at various times. Vaughn has been involved in the screen game. But ultimately, whether it's Knowles, Vaughn, Sammy Wheeler, he's found the end zone various sundry ways. Yeah, 10 of 16, 189 now and a couple of touchdowns. Howard. Nice release. Yeah, in some trouble. Steps up in the pocket and finds Brooks. Excellent play design by Colin Klein, the offensive coordinator. Boy, what a great conversation we had with him yesterday. Watch him step up away, and then the design in the play is to release away from the pressure. Steps up into the throw, does an excellent job of giving everything he possibly could in that throw to make sure the ball got to that three-quarter field throw. That's a tough throw to make. I loved what Colin had to say about the pitching change that was made and how he had to think like his quarterbacks when oh, the change was made. Up. There's that pressure. Yeah, got Ball's on the ground, and, and it's a, recovered by Kansas. It is a fumble. And it's Sampson that's on top of it. The hit comes from Lonnie Phelps. So pressure from the defensive end leads to the turnover, and Caleb Sampson with the recovery. And that flips the field. Here you see him working on the outside. 47's involved in there once again, Tim. Lonnie Phelps does a wonderful job. He has been so active. What a playmaker this guy is. Whether the ball is away from him, he's been able to track it down because of his speed on the backside. If it comes through his way, he's able to be big enough and aggressive enough to make plays. Well, think about this now. Kansas with the ball again. Two timeouts remaining. Were they to go down and score, then get the ball to open the second half because they deferred, then uh, our critique of the decision to defer will be moot. First and ten. Neal is the setback. Daniels has gone all the way. Neal twists and turns and gets out for about three, maybe four, in the arms of Eli Huggins. No, they'll only give him a yard. Second down and nine. Quick out. He hurried that one a bit. It was intended for Quentin Skinner, 83. And just like that, it's third down and nine. You're right, though, Spencer. These offenses have been really outstanding given the elements. This is as hard a reign with offense being unaffected as I can ever recall. There's Joe Klanderman. Now in his fourth year here. Stop the run. High discipline. Limit explosives. Play fast. Those were his keys coming into tonight's game. Third and nine. Double gut blitz here on the A side. Let's see if we can avoid it. It's going to be holding. Daniels looking to make a play, and he does to Grimm. Incomplete, out of bounds, and we'll check the flag. That blitz was uh, very effective, coming right up the gut. Austin Moore, 41. Here comes the call. Personal foul, shot block, number 67, and number 12. Offense, that penalty is declined. Fourth down. So they got Pooney. Dominic Cooney. Well, the pressure guard. is what they're trying to attack here, Tim. The bottom line is you can see the two inside backers. They hone in on the pressure. They've got a scissor stunt, and it's a basically a crossing stunt that yeah. allows them both to come into those A double gaps, and they do a fine job of forcing number six out of the pocket. But those offensive linemen see that quickly, and they're trying to make plays and protect him. Uh, you can see Lachlan go low when Cooney had his man stabilized. Well, that one was almost blocked as uh, Reese Vernon was under a little pressure himself. Just a 34-yard boot as the ball rolls dead at the 33. Tuesday on Fox, it's time to get it done. If you're the USA, the World Cup dream comes down to this. Women advance. It's like college football this time of year. Want to keep playing, you got to keep winning. 
the United States versus Iran. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Largest audience ever in the United States for that matchup with England. But now a draw won't get it done. They have to get a win to advance to the round of 16. Still time here. Why not give it to Vaughn? He's sure-handed, but he runs into Caleb Sampson. Great Just job three. Of, great job of chasing that play down, and that's one thing we've seen from the Jayhawks up front. Sampson and company showing great strength and lateral movement to make that play. Appears as though Kansas State's going to be somewhat conservative here. Excellent protection up front. Yeah. Clock winding down, and that pass is thrown away. Uh, the pressure keeps coming. Well, Lonnie Phelps has really been active, Spence. He, along with Malcolm Lee, have had uh, quite a first half. That pass was thrown in the direction of Phillip Brooks. Third and seven, only 13 ticks left. Yep, he sure has. And again, but up front, I will say this privately, quietly, Cooper Beebe, number 50, mm -hmm. the left guard, has been outstanding and given Will Howard not obviously the most mobile quarterback, but the protection he needs to make some of these plays. Yeah, and BB's the first guy, who was not an original starter, but the first guy that they returned to on their depth chart. Very versatile offensive lineman. Vaughn will carry it out past the 40 to the 42. And uh, that'll take us to the intermission. Really exciting game. I'd say the Sunflower Showdown has been uh, as advertised. Well, we're going to take you back to our studio in Los Angeles where Emmanuel Acho, Chris Peterson, and Petros Papadakis are at work. Our State Farm Halftime Show comes your way after this break. Stay right where you are. the Jayhawks or the Wildcats offenses as we come back Tim Brando Spencer Tillman before we get to your snapshots yep. Kansas gets the ball to open they deferred uh, yes uh, what are they going to do that opening series I think that they're going to move the quarterback out of the pocket to set up the deep over All later right. but first they got to avoid doing this right the yeah. mistakes you can't avoid the slipping down either yeah. because of the elements right OJ Burroughs did a wonderful job of ID in the ball but he slips back on it got to be mindful of the elements they're going to play a key factor now Knowles doesn't have a lot of big statistics Hey, but two carries, two touchdowns, that's not bad. How's that for efficiency? And then Jalen Daniels, man, has just been power on the point for the Jayhawks. He's ran the ball well. He's thrown it. He's the leading thrower and passer, and he's the leading rusher. So he is doing everything they expected him to do. No question of whether or not he needed a backup tonight. He seems to have dusted off all that rust that we saw against Texas. He's in the pocket right now playing at a high level. Zender will kick it away. It's Savion Morris in the Nebraska transfer that is back deep. And he'll let it go through for a touchback, and they'll bring it out. Savion's been a little sick this week. He's not been in the backfield as yet, but we may see. If you look at the first half numbers, K-State, their offense has been a juggernaut mostly in the air. You see the first down story. Kansas is, uh, has more of them. Jalen Daniels has been outstanding, too, albeit with his legs more so than his arm in key situations they can do so much more with that triple option look to go with the rpo of andy kotelnicki their offensive coordinator huge opening series up the gut casey the h-back stopped after a gain of a yard and that's that. Not fooled one bit by that Utah pass. Again, just everybody up around, right in scrimmage, mm -hmm. understanding where it's coming from, sorting it out, making a great stop at the line of All scrimmage. Right. Green is so big, they've needed him back, and he's making the most of it here. A little shovel, and he was right there. Madison High School, Portland, Oregon. Second and nine. Neil the setback. And we go out to Arnold. 
And that's well read defensively. Austin Moore, weak side linebacker, keeps that to a negligible game. And it's third and long. Well, we always talk about the middle eight of the game, right? The four minutes before the half and then the first four of the second half. How do they navigate? What are the adjustments? Kansas State obviously showed that they've made adjustments. Coach Leipold has got to find if his offense is there. Have they made adjustments? Can they get the explosive plays that they're looking for? Otherwise, Tim, if you don't have that muff, we're looking at a two-point contest the way I see things. Yeah, no doubt. Third down and seven. Here comes a little blitz. Right. Off the corner. Daniels with man coverage. Nice job. Alta Arnold. But better coverage. And Penn fantastic coverage though. by Brentz. And we've got a marker down. Did he make a play on the ball? Did he turn his head? I think Julius Prince is going to get called for yeah. that, Tim. He's going to get called for that. Did not turn his head. And many times, that is the key element. But he knew that Daniels, that he had man coverage because of that blitz. Great presence of mind to take advantage of it, and they get the flag. Handling the pressure, There's but here's no the look the on the perimeter. For pass interference, fourth down. It's press coverage. Again, that initial separation, Timmy, was very impressive. Yeah. Getting off the ball, Lawrence Arnold did a wonderful job from this X receiver position of getting in position they, to yeah. make a play. Yeah, that's a good flag pickup. That's a good flag pickup. There is no such thing as face guarding in college football. Dean Blandino in our ear to tell us that. Many times you see the flag thrown in those situations. And a good job of discussing it and picking it up. Philip Brooks is back deep. Reese Vernon the punt. He struggled tonight by comparison to Zittner. He's been averaging under 40 with his boots. Zittner hit one for 72 earlier in the game. That one goes for 38. You know, a lot of times when defenders are pre pressed in man coverage and the receiver gets a nice release, they get a little handsy. It may yeah. not have been the case in that situation, but the official thought he saw something. They picked it up after they talked about it, but not surprised at all. A lot of man coverage both these teams are playing. Well, they've allowed the jousting all night for the most part. All you want, correct, is consistency. I would like that. <laughs> Vaughn, the setback. And there goes Deuce. Well, if the first series was important for Kansas offensively, it's really important for them defensively. Well, maybe they match. And let's see exactly how this the flow goes here. Kansas gets an opportunity to show what adjustments they've made. Can they stop this offense? He's right. got so many different weapons. I think conventional wisdom is the, the house money that KU has. If they can get close, Kansas State's got a lot on the line here. That pass towards Brooks again over his head. Well, Joe Klanderman is on the defensive side doing some things, but now on the offensive side of him, Colin Klein has got to match it with the type of aggression that they talk about. And Coach Leipold, he understands what he's able to do. I think he's got a multiplicity of options available to him, but he's going to stay within the sweet spots for this team. That's the option, that's the inside zone read, and moving that athletic quarterback is outside the pocket. As Kleiman told us yesterday, he's back on time with this program after the COVID year, which was a setback. After he took over. Another dog. And a beautiful dog. And it leads to a pass that's low and will be shy of the first down yardage needed for Brooks. They're going to rule it incomplete anyway. Yeah, Craig Young is just a beast, man, coming from that strong linebacker position, number 15. And he got pressure back there. A lot of bodies in. Kalen Gervin was involved in it as well, but 15 got back there also. Ball did hit the ground. Yep. Without having control of it. So the two defenses make the noticeable changes that are necessary and get two, three and outs. Well, then now, now they may look the at field it. field of an incomplete pass is under further review. Regardless of whether they change it, it's a That'd yard short. shy of a yeah. first down. I don't know at this stage if uh, Kansas State would go with the analytics game. Dean's got a few things to say about this particular play back in our studios. Dean, we've been missing you anyway. How are you? <laughs> Miss you guys. Hope you had a nice Thanksgiving. 
Two things here <laughs> they've got to look at. They've got to look at the catch. Does he have firm control before the ball touches the ground? And then, if it is a catch, did he make the line to gain? I think if it's a catch, it's short. This is the best look. Does he have firm control before the ball touches the ground? Remember, it was ruled incomplete. It's going to have to be obvious to overturn. This is a great look for the line to gain. You can see he's probably about a half yard short if it is a catch. Yeah. Yeah. Dean, Dean, how do you make that assumption? I mean, if you, if those are great angles, about as good as you're going to get. But how do you see if that hand is underneath that ball that's touching that 360 turf? Well, you said I mean, the word tough. assumption, right? You can't assume. You yeah. have to prove it with the video. has to be obvious that he's got both hands underneath the ball and it doesn't touch the ground while loose. It's really close to me. I think it's a stance. But again, it has to be obvious to change it. Yeah, it would have it appeared to me as though he had both hands on it, After but not view, underneath the ball. The ruling of an incomplete pass will stand fourth down. Good call, Dean. Worthy of a look from Jeff Hansen, our replay official. So it is fourth down, and uh, Zintner, who's been kicking boomers all night. Uh, he's a weapon, man. He, yeah, he, he literally is. could be the difference in this game. Let's see if he makes this return man work for this and push it to the far right side of the field. That's where you want to make him work. Kansas was playing honest, thought they might fake it. He's incredible. The only good news for Kansas is the ball went 61 yards uh, all the way to the end zone. And uh, he would have loved for that to land like a 60 degree Mac Daddy. He thought he had it for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> I got friends. Fox College Football is sponsored by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem, and by Verizon, the network America relies on. Manhattan, Kansas. You think about this uh, rivalry and some of the great players and great coaches that have participated in this game this the 120th renewal Tim Brando Spencer Tillman happy to have you with us our nightcap of a trifecta on Fox Daniels nice oh did he set that up beautifully that's Tory Lachlan coming out of the backfield and Spencer he is just a master back there with his face, his eye candy by himself. Yeah, Mason Furchow was involved in that too, in what they call a levels concept. You're gonna see the tight end and him involved in the same area. Watch 89 on the delay. He's coming, that's the first level, then you got a second level guy. 89, it becomes an escort. Gets downfield, doesn't get anybody blocked. But I'm telling you, if they don't find a way to deal with 89, that's gonna be a big play later on. Lawrence Arnold is down. May have been just a non-contact injury for him. He's pointing towards that ankle, that left ankle of his, and he is uh, really one of the most athletic players. It was said of him that if there were a player on the Kansas football team that could play basketball for Bill Self, it would be this guy. Well, DeSoto's known for great athletes, man. It turns out some of the best in Texas. He's a big-time player. Coming into the game with 571 yards receiving and four touchdowns had an incredible game in that win against Duke he had eight catches for 68 yards still good field position now for KU with the ball at the 40 first down Walking in trouble Great penetration, and that was the first time we got to call Felix and Udike Uzama's name. He and Austin Moore combined, but it was bit number 91 that made the initial contact. And we call this a reduction here. This is almost a goat roping, man, man right here, man. <laughs> Rodeo style. He goes around the top of the neck, almost gets him there, but that just shows you some of the athleticism. This front, Joe Klanderman told us they're outstanding, and they are, and they can do the job just between the three of them. Yeah, really frees things up for those linebackers. He'll be credited with a sack, eight and a half for him this year. He had 11 and a half a season ago, but in the last five games, he's been shut down somewhat because of double teaming. Nice. Lachlan. Ball's out. Ball is out. Kansas State quick to get there. It appears they've got it. As 
as the umpire will see. Hayes is down there. The last to get up is Purnell, 32. Desmond Purnell with the recovery. And another early half miscue by the Kansas offense. Now yeah, the red shirt freshman comes up with it, man. He's got the goal. That's what they can ill afford to do, Tim. And I, I knew the game was going to slow down just a little bit because of the adjustments. But again, just getting that left shoulder in there. Austin Moore with the strip. The ball comes out. And then and it's great Cheatham got in there as well. Yep, Cheatham did too. Cheatham Purnell, 32, that comes away with a recovery. Yeah, but che Cheatham was the guy that popped it out of there. The Jack free safety, they'll move him around a little bit. And I didn't think he was actually going to end up playing today, Tim. Yeah, he was one of those game time decisions. This time of the year, everybody's banged up. It's just uh, to what degree. It looks like we've got uh, the rolling on the field of a fumble is under further review. Well, they're going to take a look at it. <laughs> it should be it, a fumble. It, it definitely came out. I don't. Uh, I don't see how they could change this. That's the initial hit from Moore, and then the second, he's clearly not down. That's got to be a fumble. Yeah, Cheatham 21 is the guy that got that his right arm in there and yeah. punched it out. The initial hit by Moore, but then Cheatham stripped him. And Purnell the recovery. Well, they're sorted out, but at the end of the day, it's about the turnover in these games like this. Big games are lost, not won. Trying to find out where the ball is recovered at, actually. There it is. In many cases, when there's a scrum like that, I think sometimes they believe initial possession may be with someone else, but I don't see any way you could change that call. I just see all of these purple shirts, yeah. jerseys around that ball. Yeah. I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure if they're trying to just earn who possessed it, or I think that's the that's the question. After review, the ruling on the field of a fumble will stand. First down, Kansas State. A lot of times yeah. we we get in love. I think sometimes with the technology, you feel like you have to use it. There's a lot of stake. I mean, you yeah. want to get oh, sure. the call right. I get yeah. that. So the ball rests at the 38-yard line. Kansas State with it. Well, tonight, Brooks has been a favorite target for Chris, Chris Kleiman's team. Howard in the shotgun. Brooks is up at the top of your screen. Gone. And it would appear with this lead and this field position, this would be the decision to make. Rich Miller, the leader of this defense, a senior from Detroit, making the play. He has been outstanding through the course of this season. True leader. Yep, the senior transfer from Martin Luther King, man. I'm telling you, he, he is the man in the middle for this team. He's a spiritual leader. He's the, the focal point. The nexus point is this stop unit. And he's not 100% tonight nope. either. Second down and seven. Vaughn. The deuce did well to get back. He got a couple yards after that because... I thought he was going to be caught dead to rights at the line of scrimmage. And Phelps again, by you know who, credited with the takedown. Now you got a little run pass conflict, Spence, as you like to call it. Yep. So those third and short scenarios, and when you got a team that's capable of throwing it as adeptly as they are running it, it's always a challenge. Which personnel grouping you're going to get into the work? Craig Young. Three. Now it's Craig Long, the outside linebacker. That's the matchup you want to exploit. This guy that's in motion, that's the matchup. Vaughn, there he goes, yards after contact, big time, and a flag late, face mask. So misery loves company on that play, Vaughn always a quality answer, and it's going to be Young tagged with the face mask. Personal foul, face mask, number 15, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. 
couple of reasons why you use motion. Pre-snap reads so you can get looks, but also to move people from places where you want to run. Craig Young, the strong side linebacker, was in that vacated space that Deuce Vaughn eventually exploited. Great play design, heads up, understanding exactly where you want to run. Colin Klein, the offensive coordinator, excellent design. Young would have been uh, really wise to have just allowed Vaughn to step out of bounds there. That's 12 on the carry, 10 more on the penalty, and now it's first and goal. This is Deuce's time. It's time to shine. Short of the five. I don't think there's anybody his size that runs quite as effectively as he does inside to be as small as he is in, in stature. And, and again, that's not a knock at all. I, mean, I think he's, he kind of reminds me of the old hands out there, Quentin Griffin with the number 22 on and the way he used to for the Sooners back in the day. Kind of just navigate back there seamlessly. K-State fans would, would say more like Darren Sproles, who's the only guy ahead of him in rushing yards. Mm -hmm. What a career he had, both here and at the next level. <laughs> Howard with time. Oh, dropped. dropped it. Knowles had it. It was behind him it's just gonna, a bit. It's going to be a flag. Here. And we've got a marker down to go with it. So we'll see. Looks like... Interference will be the call against Kansas. Anytime you got man coverage back there, it's going to be holding on the back end. Yeah, probably holding. Holding. Number two. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. Boy, that, First down. That turnover looms large here for Kansas. Kansas State can once again get control of this game. Yeah, Kobe grabbed him because he slipped down. Yep. Kobe Bryant slipped. He had man coverage. He was playing with an outside leverage position. And then when Knowles went inside, he slipped. Mm -hmm. And to recover, he reached and grabbed and got caught. First and goal. Vaughn. Got covered up that time. Tremendous penetration from Logan, the safety. Caleb Sampson, 98, was the first to make contact. Second and goal. Deuce has 162 total yards. Spencer, 80 rushing, 82 receiving, but no touchdowns. My guess is they'd love to get him into the end zone here. Yeah, these these runs down here don't affect or help your leverage in terms of your yardage and percentage per carry, but if you can get in the score, it's certainly will satisfy. Nothing doing. Kansas was waiting with bated breath for that run. They know what we do. They would really like to get Deuce into the end zone. Well, the thing that gets really concerning now, and it goes back to my keys to the game as Coach Leipold looks on, it's points per possession. You, you notice the game has slowed down. Yeah. And the, and the number of times you're going to have the ball, the rain has actually kind of uh, subsided a little bit. It's going to be important that the rain helps or not having the rain helps. But who ends up with this ball last in a game like this sure. could be all the difference in the well, world. Well, keeping them out of the end zone and forcing a field goal would be a win for KU at this win. stage. Power eye. Vaughn. No, sir. Stopped at the one. Great work by Eric Gilliard, who backs up Miller at linebacker. Yeah, 13. He was unlucky for somebody else, man, when he stuck his nose in there. Well, it looks like they're going to go for it. Yep. And why not? This well, kind of field position on a night like this? Yeah, watch 13 here, Tim. Read and react. Get in there. Well, that's right feeling your spot right there. Here we go. Fourth and goal. Out of the eye. Quick Let's picks. No one there. Touchdown. Double deuce. His seventh rushing touchdown, 10 total. And the lead up to 15 again. Classic influence series there by Colin Klein, preceded by three plays between the guards and tackle. Now we go with a little pitch to the perimeter. You got teams leaning, bearing down for those A and B gaps, and then you get to the edge. I love the play selection. Excellent call. Zintner for the extra point. He's having quite a night, both punting and place kicking. Deuce Vaughn, what an incredible career he's had. He's got options, too, by the way, at the end of this year. One of those veterans with options Coach at the end of the season. Coach is wishing he winks at it. <laughs> Fox College Football is sponsored by Chase Sapphire.
and by Progressive. One thing no one would ever challenge, protecting your home and car with Progressive. Colin Klein, what a remarkable career he had now calling the shots for this offense at Bill Snyder Family Stadium. They said uh, to expect SRO, I think because of the there's, weather, there's we just Bill got Snyder. a sellout. There's Bill, the man for whom this stadium is named. Wonderful gentleman. We were on hand at the Waldorf Spencer when he was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame. And it was a great night. He even got invited to the very special party that they had for him in reception. And that man right there, Will Howard, is really wake wake awakening echoes here of what colin did and i thought what colin klein told us spencer about the change from martinez to howard he said you know i just have to to change my line of thinking and he said honestly i knew a little more about will because adrian was a transfer from nebraska but he's been able to put his head into well between the ears if you will of will howard and uh, it certainly played well for them the last month Daniels in some trouble. Nice avoidance. Boy, did he ever throws it away. I, I'll tell you what, Daniels did an unbelievable job in Duke Uzama of avoiding that pressure. You're talking about footwork in the pocket. This is it right here. This guy looks like Marishnikov. Yeah. Watch 92 bearing down on him, and he just makes a miss there. That's Huggins, Eli Huggins, the zero tech, the nose tackle. And just watch again from this side right here. You got this big guy coming at you. Oh, let me step out of the way. Oh. Puts that ball <laughs> up in there. 91's in his face is too. That's yeah. a nice save right there. Indeed. Not many people would have uh, gotten out of that with a second and ten. There's yeah. a good run here. Yeah. Yeah. And he gets it out for about five, maybe more. They'll give him seven, it would appear. V.J. Payne making the stop. I think it's safe to say that Jalen Daniels has knocked that rust off of him and, yes, and maybe taking those shots right there gives you some indication that he's fine, he's 100%, maybe a little winded. But physically, he's ready to get after it. He's got that huddle, too. Yep, he's, he's, he's a different, that different team when he's in there. I got to tell you, Spence, it's third and three here. Mm -hmm. I got to figure Cole Nicky and company are thinking, we got to hold on to the ball here. No question about it. Four down territory. Tory Lachlan is the setback out of the gun. Daniels shoots it. Nice. Caught. Tight end Fairchild. He's been a sure-handed receiver in the seam all evening long for Jalen Daniels. That's Drake Cheatham with the stop. A gain of 10 moves the chain. Yeah, the senior from Andale really stuck his 6'5 frame up there and plucked that ball out of the air. Just a wonderful job of executing. Once again, patient by your quarterback. Look at his eyes. Nice seeing him right over the middle of the field and go plucking that ball out of the air. Cheatham's on the back end, but not before. 89 pulls that down. Fairchild, man, is a big guy. I love him. I put three stars by his name. I think he's playing more like a four guy tonight. He is. First and ten from the 43. Split backs. Daniels running out of time. Down he goes. Backside pressure from Nate Matlack. The sophomore making the play. A loss of two. Yeah, Matt Lack ultimately blew it up, but I, there's so much good stuff going on here, Tim. The hustle is evident, again, by Matt Lock and company, but there was so much eye candy going on. Watch the offside guard, and then this is the end guy here. You had an offside guard pulling to the left side to protect because they knew six was going that way, but 97 came all the way against the grain to make that play. Just a wonderful job. He beats uh, Bryce Caleb there. On, Caleb do on the back end the right tackle to make an outstanding play. Second and 12. Here comes pressure again. Yeah. Corner cat. They run the opposite way with Neal. Devin Neal with space. And he's out near the first down. Yeah, and I love that play because Colton Icke ran away from the numbers. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, Tim. So when you dial up pressure, if you're Kansas State and that pressure's coming off that right side, run away from the numbers, right? It's not rocket science. If you can get lucky and get your play call going opposite of the tendencies that you see, I'm sure that they've got, Andy's got a call sheet over there that's got 50% runs, 50% passes, and he knows when they're most likely to bring pressure. Third and one. There's a late maneuver to the line of scrimmage. Uh-oh. Nice. Casey slipped and fell. It was wide open. Absolutely 
wide open. Cardell was the receiver rather than Casey, 45. Spencer, it was right there. That play was money. Well, they had, he slipped and could not make it. They the had the right pace, the right tempo. Again, a two tight end kind of looked to that side, stacked. Mm. And the ball was thrown behind him too, Tim. So yeah. he did slow down and slip, but it was because he was trying to adjust. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to gather yourself, particularly these big tight ends. You don't have those loose hips like those running backs. Here we go. It's fourth down. Nice. Daniels on his own. He'll get there. First down. Kansas now 8 of 17. That's a little better than 45% on fourth down conversions. Drake Cheatham hauls him down. Well, 47 again is coming. That's Case, Jared Casey attracting some attention, but he's an escort on these plays. These hit, quick hitting option plays for the quarterback. Andy Koltenek is designing these plays to get number six in a position where he can be who he is. He's special. Uh, you figure this is a must drive for Kansas. They have got to convert, get some points with the way K-State's offense is rolling. A little curl pattern caught by Casey. Good pickup. Yeah, Jake Clifton is there defending number 31, but again, not before that ball was placed exactly where it needed to be. Just love the command that Jalen Daniels is demonstrating right now. Seven yards picked up, so second and three. Well, look at this general ship right here, getting his guys lined up where they need to be, literally shift and flip the formation. Neal managed to stay upright after that contact by... And Udike Uzama has been very active in the second half, has been able to rub off some of those chips that he's been going up against. Two blockers keying on him on virtually every down. It's third and three. Yeah, they stay on this hash over. I come back with a naked. He's still moving out of the pocket because they didn't, when he changed that formation, there was no adjustment on the part of Kansas State. A uh, run pass option maybe for Daniels. I don't know why they come back in twins. You just telegraphed it now. So, at any rate, he's got the numbers to the right side, top of the field. Third and three. Good Neil job. Good job. cuts it back beautifully. He had the numbers to the right side, which is where you, you know, there's a snapshot that you see, Tim, immediately. You know where the weak spots of the front is. The question is, can your guys block them off? And you know your personnel better, and you studied the film. Excellent play calling once again by Andy, Col Andy Colton, Andy. Nikki, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make him Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. That's what you ordered, I think, after <laughs> yeah, the game. Did. You I ordered some Italian it's instead, of, po instead sandwich of Polish. There. Yes, I got it. <laughs> He's in trouble here. Dumps it off to Tory Lachlan. Oh, Lachlan down to the 31-yard line. Josh Hayes with a big hit. Man. Pick up a three on that play. Mm -hmm. Lachlan's been effective. They've turned to him tonight because of all the injuries. No Thomas, no Morrison, who's been ill much of this week. So this young man has really come on. Trained as a receiver, moved mm -hmm. to running back out of Rockdale, Texas. 12th play of this drive. Well, this is a long time consuming drive, yeah. man. Right. Back to that notion of possessions. Over six minutes long. Effective, yes, but using up a lot of play clock. Oh, nice move. Kevin Neal, very effective. Now, Jalen Pickle was there, Tim, in a pickle. Uh -oh. That nice little move. He's somebody down. Yeah, uh -oh. you got to get Neal down. Yeah, and they need him. Yep. They don't have a back that's got the moves of a Devin Neal available to him. He is the best it, I they think got. he's going to be all right. He's maybe a little winded, Charlie Horse, perhaps. Look at the move he put on Pickle there, man. Yeah. That's an excellent move. I think he just got dinged yeah. upside the head. He may have to come out. Yeah, he felt it right there yep. as the yep. K-State defender flew by. Timeout with 23 seconds remaining in the third. College football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Waiting seconds of the third quarter, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. Huge drive here for Kansas. Third down and six coming up in what has been a very long and time-consuming drive. 6.42 and counting. Tight bunch formation.
Daniels. Nice. Oh, he's got Casey. What a catch. What concentration. What a catch by the former walk-on. Keeps the drive alive. A first down. And we've got a nipped up Wildcat here. Drake Cheatham is down. Yeah, Cheatham got dinged trying to handle Casey, man. That was the mighty Casey on that catch. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Pretty nimble, don't you think? Big fella has come a long way. We take the time out. As the clock winds down to the end of the third. Ooh, look at that. Oh, man. Talk about a Barishnikov that's sex. not tapered. Big sex. <laughs> As we open play in the fourth quarter, you look at the score by quarter. Kansas in a must-score situation brings for the third time tonight Jason Bean into the game. So two quarterbacks on the field, and Bean takes it this time. Reverse. And he throws it, and it's nice. caught inside the 10 to Luke Grimm. This is the first time that he's actually been used in the play up until now. Spencer, your favorite term of the night, eye candy. Grimm comes up hobbling, but that's a huge play and moment in this drive. And what usually happens is initially, when you see all of this motion, it's to slow and orient yourself down. But everybody else has repped on this thing a hundred times, Tim, and they're going at full speed. So Kansas State caught off guard by all the eye candy. Those calories hurt them on that play. 15th play of the drive right here. First and goal for Daniels. Play fake. He chucks it towards Casey. Does he have it? Yes, yes he does. Touchdown. Boy, what a big catch there in a drive where he had two to get them into the end zone. I'm telling you, he's the MVP of this game, man. And just in terms of the plays that he's made, if, if this holds up, and I'm sure they're going to look at it again, but 47, this is a two-handed catch by a six-foot 255-pound tight that's, end. That's a great catch. That's an awesome catch. That's a great catch. Yeah, and he never lost control of the ball. I'm sure they'll look at it, Spencer. Now you see the hand? Well, wait, I don't know, Tim. I, I um, The butt end of that ball was Real in contact with the surface. Now. I would yeah. love to. Personal foul, face mask, number 25, defense. Well, they got a personal foul. To the Even if they negate play, this particular catch, I would the play love to is hear. under review. Let's see if the ball moves. Uh, I think I would love to get uh, Dean's uh, yeah. comment on that, too. I thought the ball may have hit the ground. It did hit the ground, but, I think. But did he have control of the ball long enough I would say in no. the end zone for it to be a touchdown? I would say no. Dean will help us out. We did have a face mask, a personal foul to go with it, and uh, Dean's going to help us. Go ahead, Dean. Yeah, the, the key here is does he have firm control and maintain that control because the ball definitely hits the ground. As I'm looking at yes. this, I see the right hand on the ball, the left hand comes off. To me, he's using the ground to make the catch. I don't mm -hmm. see firm control. This is the best look. You're going to see the ball touch the ground, doesn't have firm control, in my opinion. You're going to see that left hand come off the football right yeah. there the ground enables him to gain possession to me it's an incomplete pass certainly agree based on that angle you're right and he instinctively brought that right knee up to, yeah. to bring the ball closer to him hey dean when when we're talking about the end zone though okay if he has possession long enough isn't it different when you're in the end zone versus say oh maybe the 45 yard line that's if a good question the yeah, the, yeah the possession rule is the same whether you're in the end zone or the field of play especially when you're going to the ground like that whether that's the right. 50 yard line or the end zone he still has to have firm grip and control before it hits the ground and maintain that control that that through the years Spencer has changed in the college game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a time, I'll remember, and I'll never forget, Florida, Tennessee, Jabbar Gaffney catch. It was ruled a After touchdown. Review, it's an incomplete pass. Yep. The personal foul, face mask, will be enforced from the previous spot, half the so, distance. So the personal foul on the face mask from Echo Boydo does help Kansas in this situation since the touchdown was nullified. Well, he's working with press coverage out here in Boydo. And that was uh, quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was uh, defending Skinner. Went to Skinner 83. So this moves it to the three, and it's a first and goal. I think 
inside the game here is the fact that you moved into the fourth quarter now on this massive drive that's consumed so much time off the clock. It's going to be about nine minutes by the time if they go three downs to get in. Neal tripped up and down at the one. Excellent penetration by Boydo, who was guilty of that face mask, to trip him up, and he's all smiles. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Tim, because the strength of that protection, if you will, for lack of a better word, was all on that right side, and they had the numbers, and, and uh, that was blown up by these Wildcats. That's secondary, particularly since it's been depleted by injury, mm -hmm. has played well for K-State tonight. Neal the setback. Ah, here's Daniels. Look out. He is there. Touchdown. And that's the difference maker that Daniels is. Let's see if he gets up. I know he's got... Well, he took a mean took a hit. Shot. Yeah, sure did. That one had to hurt. Mm -hmm. Sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Holding that hip as he fell down. Just taking his time. But you were talking about uh, this offense, Spencer, and... The kind of hits you're going to absorb in it. This is an outstanding example of it. And this is where he's got to be smart. When you leave your feet, nothing good can happen. When you leave your feet and turn your head to the defenders, nothing good can happen, Tim. It's tough. The inside read, the mesh, he did that well. But that spin move right there, when you leave your feet, you're like a lame duck in the air. You guys get free shots on you that way. Yeah. You can't protect yourself. You just hit him pop right in the midsection. Yeah, that was Cheatham that got him. He's up, though. Yep, yep. I think that's what happened. He just got the wind knocked out of him. Well, that's uh, good Chief. news for Kansas fans. With Neal's been down and gotten up and come back, and they're going to expect Jalen Daniels to do the same. He's Looks gonna, like they're going for two. Well, they're going to try to get two of those points back that they lost yep. earlier. It's Bean in at quarterback for the two-point conversion. How about this formation? This is a quad. Okay, this <laughs> You get out four moves and you change this. They used this once already today. Got to go to that right side. Bean. Nice. It is caught. caught it. It's Fairchild. No, you can't. no they he dropped, he, really he dropped, dropped the ball. It. That's the first time he's dropped one tonight. Excellent execution, Tim. Yep. You just got to finish it. I'm telling you, 47. Jared Casey set the stage so high, the bar so high. Fairchild's got to catch that ball because it was planted right where it needed to be. Yeah, it was. He absorbed a hit. It was a good play defensively. He threw it into tight quarters. Jalen Daniels showing a great deal of courage, if not fundamentals. And Bean comes in for the two-pointer. That's one Fairchild nine times out of ten is going to make. Ugh. Fox College Football is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. This sellout crowd is enjoying the dampness and enjoying a 10-point lead. But Jalen Daniels and Jason Bean are also feeling pretty good after what was a, a drive. It seemed as if it lasted a lot longer than that number. Yeah. We had some timeouts and the quarter change in between. But it's still a two-score game after that dropped two-point conversion in the end zone. Knowles is back deep. He's going to bring it again. He's extremely confident, and here's why. Malik Knowles trying to put a period on this one. An in-your-face response from the senior from Mansfield, Texas. Well, Tim, he's been extremely efficient and productive. We talked about the two carries for two touchdowns. Now he's become explosive on top of it. Nice job of stimming this to the left side and then getting vertical, then bouncing it back out to the edge and showing you some of that great speed he's got on the big end. Look at him reach. And he's got those long gaping strides. A wonderful asset, not just from scrimmage, but in special teams as well. He's feeling every bit of it. Well, he's taken it to the house on kick returns three times in his career. And now he sets the Wildcats in a position to put a period and an exclamation point on their run towards a Big 12 title game next week at Jerry World. Mm. You talk about taking the air out of what Kansas accomplished. 
in a flash. And it's explosive because, you know, KU took so long to get their points. Deuce ball on the setback out of the shotgun. First down from the 31. Ball. And you hear the crowd, Deuce, Deuce, as he carries it. Not since McAllister played for the Saints have I heard as loud a Deuce chant from the crowd. A gain of nine. Yeah, the well, way everybody talks about those little karaoke steps <laughs> that these running backs do. I mean, he does a nice job of just crisscrossing over. Great footwork. Make no doubt about it, despite Howard's heroics, the second half of the season, this offense runs through 22. Here he goes again. Here he goes again. And again. Timmy, what makes him so special, again, we've seen it today. Not those moves right there, but Deuce Vaughn has got a strong, absolute tight core. The inside of his body, I mean, that area right there is so strong, he turns and twists every down back. He never has to come off the field. He's great inside. He showed you his short yardage work on the previous series. And then I just think the thing about it is he's got the moves, man. Like Jagger. Get down, baby, bubba, baby, get down. 105 yards rushing, 187 total for Deuce. Jayhawks were ready for him that time. Stopped at the nine. That's Wilson and Westmoreland that collaborate. Malik Knowles has gotten his breath back after that <laughs> tremendous return, and he checks in at wide receiver. He started this. Maybe they want him to finish it. He's up at the top of your screen. Second down goal. That's Warner to the bottom of the screen. In motion now. Vaughn. Deuce gets to the edge. And he's wrapped up inside the five at the four by Lorenzo McCaskill. Five-yard pickup. Love that play right there. Doing an excellent job of calling folks down in their splits to get him down so that you can get him to the edge and then... Gillum, number 55, the center, pulling, showing you he has athleticism to get to the edge as well. Well, they're happy that Gillum's out there. Sort of an all-hands-on-deck kind of night for K-State. Soft spot over the guards, natural bubbles right now, inside zone. Should be anyway. Howard with time. They ran out of real estate trying to get it to Brooks. Burrows was in coverage. But he was uh, dangerously close to the end line. Yes. My question is, do you take the three here? It would appear that they are. Zentner's coming out. Caleb Sampson, who was rushing there, is uh, down on the field for Kansas. Mm. No control. Great effort, though. <laughs> well, it's going to take a couple of scores for KU. But if they can hold this to a three... The game is still on the line with 11.04 remaining. The check on Sampson. We'll be right, right back. Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm. The State Farm personal price plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. Well, after the timeout, they've decided to go for the jugular and to gain the Governor's Cup. Put this game out of reach with a touchdown rather than take the field goal. Zentner was trotting out there before the timeout and left. Yeah. They may have to rethink it after this uh, pre snap penalty. False start. False start. The 70. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still take two down. And that'll change the minds of the Kansas State. Staff. There's big KT Levinson. Oh, he was pulling, wasn't he? Yep. He was, you can tell. You know what? You also yeah. can tell, Tim. Yeah. Look how far he is off he is on the line of scrimmage. Right. right. That's always a leading indicator. He's headed someplace laterally. All right. Here's Zentner from 27 yards. Shouldn't be a problem. It's a 13-point lead, which keeps this game in play. Time out. Wildcats. Ram Power Players brought to you by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. 
You like Deuce Vaughn. He was the one serving up excellent running skills inside. He can carry the load. He's a little guy, but he carries a lot, just like those Ram trucks, man. He shows you the speed, the quickness. He's got hands well over 1,200 yards for the year. He's added some more today. He's an outstanding back that's got a bright future. Whether he winks and coach and stays another year or heads to the next level. Good night, everybody. <laughs> While you're on a roll, Spencer, go right ahead. Heisman White sponsored by Nissan, <laughs> premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Well, there you are. And that's my guys right here, man. I changed things up a little bit. I had CJ up there, obviously, with the loss. He comes down. Duggan will eclipse him and go to that number one spot. And the insert is J.J. McCarthy. What a wonderful job he did today. I think the scheme he matched up against actually helped him a lot. Man coverage was able to throw some balls up, and they beat him. And I think Caleb Williams, you can't ignore this kid. Lincoln Riley's in a position to do something that has never been done before, to have Heisman Trophy winners at multiple schools. That's pretty special. Devin Neal gets it out to the 32-yard line. Second and three, Daniels will carry it. And he wisely <laughs> protected his hip that time as Josh Hayes was moving in for the kill. Well, with USC and Tennessee wrapping up sure wins, four of the top ten have lost this week. Ohio State, LSU losing to AM tonight. Clemson goes down to South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And Oregon is defeated by Oregon State. Kansas State, potentially, Spencer, could move up to number eight yep. because of all of the top ten losses. So even more at stake than just a shot in a rematch against TCU. They could climb in the BCS, excuse me, college football playoff standings. <laughs> Neal, wrapped up behind the line by Felix and DK Uzama. Boy, oh, big time play there. He's been on the other side of the line of scrimmage a lot. Been a little quiet pause there before since we've heard his name, but boy, he stepped up big here. Watch the flow and reaction here of this three-man front. Zama's on the other side of it immediately. He feels that void. Run fits. Not a problem for this 3-4 scheme. Yeah, they're feeling the title opportunity right now. After that three and out. Brooks from the 30 going the other way. That's a tripped up. That and we've got a marker down. Well, that may flip the field position circumstances. As the marker comes down, a 41-yard boot by Reese Vernon. I don't know if that was Snowden down there. It just got a little shot mm -hmm. to the back there. He's trying to pull himself off. Yep. During the return, legal block in the back, number 30, return team, 10-yard penalty, at the end of the run, first down, timeout. Kansas State, one good long drive from salting this one away and claiming their chance at a Big 12 title next week. Fox College Football is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve Manhattan, Kansas. And today, look at that top 10, decimated. Okay. Ohio State bludgeoned by Michigan. They're holding on with thoughts that pure playoff privilege may help them. And with what happened tonight to LSU, look out. I think USC is going to be the biggest oh, beneficiary. They're, they're, they're the exactly. huge beneficiary after knocking off Notre Dame. There's no question. Knowles. Nice. They used him on this play, the sweep, all night long. <laughs> Worked for touchdowns. Now he's just trying to put it away. All the way out to the 44-yard line. And the clock goes tick, 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 tick. Game of 29. Only Beyonce's got better moves than that Knowles, man. <laughs> He's spinning. Watch him come through here shaking and baking and moving, spinning, taking advantages of his blocks and taking them to the edge. I love the way he's yeah. working his way through there, mindful of where his blocks are and his angles are. He's done the last name proud. Yeah, no question <laughs> about that. From the 44. Nice. Vaughn taken down after a negligible game. Craig Young making the stop. So, Spencer, 
looking at the landscape for what it is, okay, late in the season, the games of November, we always remember. And Saban tacked on some extra points at the end of the game. That will help. It's a beauty contest. It is, man. no question. So the top 10, when you think about it, could likely be this. Georgia, Michigan, TCU, USC. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ohio State, Bama, Tennessee, K-State. Presuming that's just some quick figuring that our crack staff has put together. Look out for that. The help of our content coordinator, Scott Alexander. And I, I agree with it. I, I think Ohio State will not drop precipitously because they're Ohio State. Let's not lose sight of brand names. Since the beginning of the BCS and the playoff, brands always win. Absolutely. And I think Ohio State, don't count them out. I think, Tim, yep. the national teeth used to start with the SEC. Saying, well, why not a two-loss right. SEC team? I think you're in a position now where you can say the same thing yep. for Ohio State. Now, the LSU loss swings the door wide open mm -hmm. for USC, Ohio State, staying in the hunt. Look at Howard go. I love saving that until this point. You know, you, you haven't run him but one other time tonight. <laughs> He's smiling. He was doing his yep. Adrian Martinez impression <laughs> right there. <laughs> Called Reed inside. And yep. He does a nice job of getting what he can and protecting himself and getting down. And let's not lose sight of the contributions Adrian made at the start of this season, Spencer. Yep. I mean, he, he absolutely made a difference to their start. And when Howard came in, when we, his time, his number was called, he came up big. And it all started in that game with TCU six weeks ago that we were on hand for. Vaughn remains the setback. Six and a half to play. Such an effective inside runner, man, would be so slight. If this is Deuce's last game, he's going out on a good one. And there's there's Adrian, who's been through a lot in yep. his career. He has. And should be congratulated on how he's handled things in the aftermath of being hurt and unable to finish what he had started. But Will Howard, he's been a great teammate for throughout the back half of the season. You know, I, I tell you, it's rare that we give advice to young men, but I, I, if I gave advice to him, it would be one thing. Understand we live in a world of images and impressions. Most people are not willing to look past the veneer. Yeah. There's Vaughn. Here's his moment. Inside the 15. Finally hauled down by Young, and he will not be denied. Well, he's so effective. Again, we've made a point of this already, but I can't say it enough. I, I don't think there's a more effective inside runner that's this small, that this is the size in the nation. I mean, he's so effective, and he's patient. So and much, so much power. moves that he makes on yeah. the other end, and it has the consciousness to protect the ball at the conclusion of his run. I mean, this guy is just unbelievably gifted. He's got a lot of power in that package, doesn't he? He really does. And this, this guy is, isn't too bad no, either. DJ Giddens gets it down to the five. He has played big the last couple of weeks. Jerome Robinson. Jeremy Robinson, I beg your pardon, number 90, making the stop for him. And if, double, you. if Double Deuce doesn't give that wink to Coach uh, Kleiman, DJ Giddens will certainly be there to, to pick up the, the slack, as he's no, no slouch. A very effective runner inside as well. Second and two. Line to make is the three for a first down. He's in. Line to make there is for a touchdown. It's Gibney's time. Mr. B play on the ISO. Timmy gets in the end zone. Gets that head down. Usually the low man is supposed to win, but not if you're DJ Giddens. He gets in. The redshirt freshman showing you, hey, I'm not average, man. I'm more than capable of running this game. Junction City, Kansas. He ran for 216 in the Kansas Class 6A state championship game. And he is the future. Make no doubt about it. And Will Howard has had some performance as well. Hello, how do you do, Will Howard? America now knows about you. Well, 
you have for the last 13, soon to be 14 years. It is outstanding, though, to think about how many more, how many more will there be? One TD equals one beer. He was, uh, I think he was at the pub crawl last night at the wine dive. He's legal, leave him alone. <laughs> Well, a wonderful senior day, and uh, this week at a press conference, Chris Kleiman had a wonderful comment on today's senior day. It's hard to keep track of senior classes, as everybody knows, because is it a fourth-year senior, a fifth-year senior, a sixth-year senior? Are they coming back? Are they not coming back? Um, you know, there's going to be some guys that I'm going to hug for the second year in a row, uh, and there's going to be a couple guys that I'm going to hug, and I'm going to say, I'll see you next year, and they'll give me a quick wink. <laughs> he talked to us about the wink factor. I'm sure he got a few of those. Jason Bean now has come into the game. Last time he had it, he threw it. And Daniels will take it this time. It was from Bean to Daniels this time in the offense. Fairchild, the intended receiver, goes incomplete, second down and 10. Well, that one had a rope on the end of it. That was because he had pressure right in his face on that particular play, and, and it happened. It's been happening all night long with Eli Huggins' at nose tackle, the zero technique, providing the pressure right up the middle. Spencer, Kansas, were they, they, they were the darlings of September and early October in mm -hmm. college football, winning their first five. They did manage to get bowl eligible. The goalpost went down yep. against Oklahoma State. That's how important it was. That pass to Douglas Emelian incomplete. But listen, uh, this is a team that was depleted by injuries. It impacted the way the month of November went for them. Getting bowl eligible is a start for a program that was just at the very bottom of Division I college football at the Power Five level. They'll have an opportunity to have that winning season with their bowl game opportunity. But you could tell tonight, without the miscues, they were right there with K-State until the Wildcats really took this game over midway to late in the third quarter. Well, they'll have an opportunity to get an extra 15 practices in for that bowl preparation a lot further along than they were last year at this time. Flags come down. Before the snap, timeout, Kansas State, first of the half. K-State got seconds. a timeout. And it's a 30-second timeout. And, Tim, just to complete that thought about where this program is, and talking to Coach Leipold, he talked about the depth really being something. The yeah. first-line players are pretty good, right? right? They're athletic. We've seen what their quarterback has done. They're able to stay with teams. And you look at some of the teams that had success against early in this year. Well, they're, they're outstanding, man. Well, he's got a new contract now until yep. 2029. Mm -hmm. He'll keep his staff intact. They've been with him all the way back to Wisconsin-Whitewater, through Buffalo, and now here. And they'll be adding some new facilities and some other things will be announced soon to give you some sense that there's commitment to the program beyond just hoops. Yeah. What will make it, though, all the more difficult, and this is a big recruiting game, let's face it, there's a territorial aspect oh, of no this question. win in the Governor's Cup will make it more difficult for Blackhold, and he's aware of that. Kansas State became a major player in college football under Bill Snyder, slipped a bit during the changeover. COVID was tough on climbing in his first year, but the foundation with the We Are Family program remains. Pass is incomplete intended for Jared Casey, who in defeat tonight has been really fun to watch. He helped lead Kansas down the field for that touchdown before the missed two-point conversion, and things begin to slide away after the Malik Knowles kick return. Well, he's got a bright future, does Casey, though. He's just a sophomore, Richard sophomore. He's got great ability, tremendous hands. I mean, the adjustments that he made on two critical catches tonight, one was called incomplete in the end zone, but I tell you, he, he impressed me. And if Daniels is, in fact, back, look out. Got a lot of veteran quarterbacks. Is that um, punt is accepted with a fair catch by Brooks. Our Pacific Life game summary is sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Howard to a wide open Wheeler after he uh, was resourceful, getting away from pressure. Knowles was nonstop running that jet sweep. Mm -hmm. Knowles and Vaughn coupled with Will Howard, and it's party time That's right. in mini Manhattan. <laughs> I'll never forget Spencer going back to the late 80s. I think it was 88. 
was the battle of futility you both of these programs mm -hmm. were struggling Bill Snyder came in and resurrected the Kansas State program for good Giddies. well he got to the second level in a hurry didn't he Marvin Grant the Purdue transfer makes the stop for Kansas and that was a saving tackle DJ Giddings on the replay Mr. DJ <laughs> By the way, I got the Rihanna reference. I just didn't have time <laughs> after the touchdown to go there. And just so you know, I, I did get it. All right. Just checking. I, I thought if anybody would, you would. Yeah, I had to I had to get through that 10 count. You know, producers, <laughs> you don't want to be on a producer's report of Jake Jolivet. <laughs> Giddens spun down at midfield. Game of three. We will have... As we mentioned earlier, the Mountain West title game next week. Looking forward to being on the blue field for the very first time. But I uh, want to thank everybody involved all season long. Dustin Dente, our director, producer, Jake Jolivet, who pulled uh, double shifting this week. Oh, yeah. Helping Richie Zions on the Cowboys game, which had over 42 million viewers. Well, it's been a wild and crazy time at Fox Sports. And this fractured media universe, that blew my mind. Yeah. 42, 42 million. 42 million. And the largest audience ever for soccer in the United States, too. Over 15 million watching that from Qatar. Giddens to the 45-yard line. And also our booth crew. Uh, Scott Alexander, our content coordinator, our spotter, Brett Bender. Yes, son of Gary Bender, the legendary <laughs> broadcaster. Brett is a legendary spotter. At my age, trust me, I need one. <laughs> Brett, I loved your dad calling my games when I was at Oklahoma. Yeah, he Gary, was the best, He man. did call a few of your games. And uh, big ups to Dave Lamont, who stepped in as our stage manager and broadcast associate here on site today. Third down and three. Giddens. That's a little bit of a uh, ball. Yeah, that's a little bit of a Vaughn move. Put his foot in the ground and change direction to get the first down and move the chains. Yeah, just being patient, waiting on those guys to do the bl blocking up yeah. for you. You know, Spencer, I think Kleiman was the perfect guy to replace Snyder. All the success he'd had at North Dakota State, taking over for Bowles, who went on to Wyoming. You know, his structure and his core values were right in step mm -hmm. with what Bill Snyder was and remains all about yeah they deal with courage sacrifice and selflessness and they've got a posted right on the interior of the facility when you walk in and, and he reminded us of, of what those core values are and, and, and not unlike his counterpart tonight across the way mm -hmm. they have similar backgrounds no question and he was quick to point out to us how much respect he has for what lance Leipold has done mm -hmm. and, and i think kansas state's success has put the pressure on kansas to right the ship yep. and a guy like this a guy on the other side look at that that's what it's all about that's cool my guess is you know we waited a long time to have these two programs both have six plus wins coming into this game my guess is we'll see many more of those mm -hmm. in the future this matchup had never been seen in prime time on an over-the-air network that will come to an end tonight and many times in the future and the party is on, and a celebration with the rain coming down. You're coming back. Trust me, it's like holy water in Manhattan, Kansas tonight. Their 14th straight win over the Jayhawks. That's the longest win streak in series history. Two men that really respect one another. Well, the last time they won a Big 12 title was in 2003. Number 13, K-State defeated number one, Oklahoma, in a stunning upset that night. They'll get their chance against TCU, and it would be a stunning upset because the Horned Frogs are undefeated. And this team remembers how they got past them, losing an 18-point lead in Fort Worth, Texas, just six weeks ago. Spencer and I will uh, return, give you some final thoughts. Our congratulations to the Wildcats, who have earned their way back into a title opportunity. More from Manhattan on a great rainy night.
nothing like your last game at home when you have an opportunity to produce a conference championship, and that's what Kansas State has been. Well, this series has not been interrupted maybe just once in 1910, yeah. and I think we had one of the best of them all. I, mean, yeah. I know you were around probably for a lot of those <laughs> other ones. I, I wasn't, but this was a great game. Yeah. Uh, very highly contested and up by both sides. A renewal, really, when you think about it, of, uh, of Kansas now being a viable opponent. Yeah. It's been... And they played very well, but Kansas State was just too strong in too many areas and too much depth to go along with it. And uh, I can't say enough for the job that Chris Kleiman has done, and he's done it uh, in different ways through the course of the year. This league is as tough as any top to bottom. Only two teams, West Virginia uh, and, and Iowa, Iowa State, State yeah. are, everybody else is going bowling. So That's every right. night out, you got to play. To a very high level and I think it speaks to the parity the balance overall in college football specifically in this conference and then again we think in Iowa State just a couple of years ago were the darlings of this yeah, conference right are. and they still are pretty talented he's had a drop off in talent this year and I think West Virginia is going to be back in the mix this is the same group that went toe-to-toe -to -toe <laughs> yeah. with these groups that were dominant last week right I'm so happy. they're happy about it Will has done a wonderful job yeah. here instead of Martinez being out yeah. outstanding and when you think about it the opportunity to play TCU in a rematch and many people will say it's hard to be a team twice what are TCU's concerns with this version of K-State next week well first of all they're energized they're encouraged they've got a quarterback that they've settled on by default or whatever will has played at an elite level we talked about before the show started that the 11 touchdowns that he's thrown in that four game window mm -hmm. was an organization high and nobody's ever done that before in this time period so I think his level of play right now with Deuce Vaughn and all the talent he's got we've seen new emerging talents Mitch yeah. Senate we talked about him right. and then Casey the other tight end showed some great athleticism. Listen, this is a K-State team that could vault into the top 10 after this performance mm -hmm. with all of the carnage of this day with top 10 teams falling by the wayside. Four in total. Spitzer, they could be up to number eight Absolutely. in the next week. And, and, and I wouldn't blink once. I think the <laughs> biggest benefactor has been certainly USC tonight with yes. their dominant win over yeah. Notre Dame. I think that was impressive. And Alabama's waiting in the wings no question. with the biggest brand in college football. And don't count out Ohio State. I'm <laughs> no, here to no, tell you're you, right. don't count out Ohio State. Uh, the Buckeyes man. have a lot to be proud of, and the Big Ten people will be saying, well, if the SEC can get two, yep. why not Absolutely. us? Absolutely. Legitimate. We shall see. Well, Spencer, enjoyed it. I see you next too, week. Friend. Love you, mean it. We will have a title to call for you next week, and it'll happen on the Blue Field in Boise, Idaho. Our many thanks to everyone here in Manhattan, Kansas, and their hospitality. For Spencer Tillman, our entire crew, Jake Jolivet and Dustin Dente, calling all the shots with Josh Franz and Andrew Wolf. Thank you. Good night from Manhattan.